Hello, and welcome to episode 203 of Flicks in the Six. I'm one of your hosts, Anthony Costanzo, with me, for an always, the man, the myth, the diesel, Alessandro Bielsi. Say hello, Al. Is this like a sex thing? <laughs> Is the sex thing starting? <laughs> <laughs> On this week's episode, I actually completely forgot about that cameo. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> On this week's episode... Avatar at the box office, Quantumania, and another thing I'm very excited for that snuck up on me, all before diving into our flick of the week, Bullet Train. But first, Al, what are we drinking? Wait, you seriously called me a diesel, you motherfucker? I I was going to go through this whole thing of, like, people call him the diesel, but he'll always be a Gordon to me. But, like, I just couldn't, <laughs> I, I just couldn't figure out the right working of the words there. <laughs> nah, it's okay. Um, You're like, I am a diesel. (laughs) (laughs) I I feel like in that movie, it became like kind of like in um, semi-pro when uh, he calls him a jive turkey. Yes. (laughs) No one called anyone a JT. Everyone heard he clearly (laughs) called you a cocksucker. (laughs) I have to to rewatch that. And I also have to rewatch the other guys because I keep seeing clips from both of them like randomly and Mm -hmm. laughing a lot. And I like those are two movies that I like just kind of brushed off when I saw them. Yeah, the other guys was like the first one of the McKay ones that was like a comedy, but also was trying to have a serious aspect to it, mm. like a more realistic aspect to it, as well yeah. as obviously that was like the first of the movies <laughs> that he did that had like legitimate like social commentary in it. Sure. Now, he just dipped his toes in the water of that, but obviously he would go on to make all the other movies that are have way more to say about things um, <laughs> that actually matter in life. But um, yeah, yeah. Semi pro. Like, that, that guy's all over the place, though. I mean, I mean, good, good on him. Like his movies yeah. are—they keep it fresh. They're funny. They—they've got—they've got so much going on. I like yeah. that. Okay. Semi pro though is what like in the peak of his totally silly, ridiculous, over the top mm. shit. That's could not be less serious. Um, I saw a bit of that not too long ago. They did it on Cinephobe recently. Um, I very much enjoyed that episode. That was that was a, a good laugh. Uh, but anyway, back to the beer. Uh, we're drinking a Newberg beer. We're back. It's the new hey. year. Why not, why not crack open an old favorite? Uh, sure. It's a new beer for the show. And for Anthony, I've drank a bunch of this because I bought a case of it at the time. New um, for the show, not for the Berg. Yes. Um, so this is Newberg Slancha. It's a dry Irish. It absolutely stuff. is not. <laughs> Listen, man, good luck trying to figure out Gaelic. Like, I can't, and I'm part Irish. So it's, um, oh, yeah, man. it's a dry Irish stout. Um, I think last year was the first time they did it for St. Patrick's Day. So Okay, so we probably should have just waited a couple months. I was thinking about that, too, but considering I already failed at getting a Newberg beer onto the show 90 seconds earlier, I said, well, sure. why not we do this one? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It's probably brewed and canned by Newberg Brewing Company, Newberg, New York, USA. This beer was made here. It was made here. Um, it is 4.5% alcohol by volume. It comes in a pint, which we love. Um, it's a classic and traditional dry Irish stout. We're drinking it locally, or at least I am. And sure. Um, we oh, look at a- this. Look at this. Their logo. <laughs> <laughs> you steamrolled what I was going to say so you could beat me this time. <laughs> I tip my cap to you, sir. You won. You won uh. this round. Uh, I'm not even going to go through with it. Go on. <laughs> um, it, we're, we are not drinking it fresh, but we did store it cold. So <laughs> one out of two isn't that bad. That's that's, that's true. Is that that you, that classic meatloaf song? <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. It's two out of three, right? Um, I really only know by the dashboard light, to be perfectly honest. Wow. I would do anything wow. for love. I know that one. Sure. There's but probably one or two that. other ones. Two, I think it's two out of three, I bet. Yeah, I think you're right. It's like, I want you, I need you. There ain't no way I'm ever going to love you or something like that. Jesus <laughs> really dark, depressing. He's a horn dog, that guy. Yeah. Anyway. Um, uh, one thing I never noticed about this, I'm really not, I'm not pulling a joke this time, uh, but the where it says drink fresh, door cold, those little the little iconography for what I are either drops or hops look like they are pixelated. And I like that. Well, because they're hops. Yeah. They're, it looks pixelated because it's the ridges of the cone of a hop. I know, but it, but unless you look close to see that detail, it literally looks like it's from a video game <laughs> from like yes, an eight bit. <laughs> it looks like a, like super Mario, like water is falling. I think them. we should develop some sort of like 
old school arcadey style eight bit video game with like um, um, like a puzzly game with mm-hmm. you know something to do with the brewery equipment in the background and like getting the right things into the right containers um, because this already looks great. It does, and I'm sure the rest of it would look fantastic as well. You just gotta make all the, basically take all of the pictures that are on this can and give it like not smooth edges. Well, you know, artwork talked, done. We've talked about the uh, <laughs> the versions of their labels that have the Riverfront and Newburgh before. This one has it, and that doesn't even look pixelated so much as like dot matrix printer. Yeah, um, which I mean, I guess is its own version of pixelated, but like that's a very specific it's a classic like subsection of that. Yeah. Um, would you like to sample this beer? I would, but one more thing I have to check with you first. Okay. Uh, to the right of the collage, the drink local, the drink fresh. Uh, yes. The striped orange, dark green, light green. <laughs> mm-hmm. Does one of yours have like a misprint in it? Like where it's white? Like a white breakthrough? Yes. So it's not a misprint. I, yeah, well, I mean, it, it was, but they probably misprinted a whole sheaf of labels. Why is it misprinted? I, I don't know. That's I'm, so weird. The other side of it's fine. <laughs> you know, you notice how also like it's they didn't line it up when they glued it. <laughs> like, well, I'm okay. Sometimes with that. there's just user error. Sometimes, well, I'm mean, both these errors. Honestly, were probably uh, machine errors. But regardless. Limited release. All right, let's give this one a second. I'm, I'm wow. going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to write an email to Paul. I'm going to tell him <laughs> that you are dissatisfied with the entire beer experience because they didn't undo the label and redo the label for this and particular And also batch. a nice postscript on that, like, how dare you not call it Sour Jessica Porter. <laughs> 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 All right, cheers. Cheers. I don't know what to do with this glass and this can. I know. I, I wasn't going to bother, but mostly because my 16-ounce glass only seems to be holding 15.9 <clears throat> ounces fluid. Hmm. All right. Definitely dry. Mm-hmm. Definitely a stout. Yep. Dryrish. It's, dry, it's a dryrish. <laughs> dryrish stout. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, this is... I mean, this is pretty good as far as stouts go. I'm not... You know what it is? I'm not like I really have to be in the mood for a dark, dark beer. I mean, th- this is. Well, not... I figured we didn't make it to St. Patty's Day yet, but it's of the right time. Mm-hmm. The no, Irish, it's... the Irish stout though, is different than just a classic regular old stout because those tend to be a little sweeter. These are super dry. Yeah, I actually think I I might prefer this though. I mean, I I like this beer a lot. It's a very yeah. solid beer. I'm just in general. I'm not like a huge stout person, but I think I prefer this to those sweeter flavors. If I'm gonna have one, I guess I gravitate more towards an imperial stout because I like it to have that balance of like they tend to have the vanilla y flavor with the sweetness that comes along with that, which is a very different experience in this. But mm. also you get that alcohol burn that is not common for beer, and it's not unwelcome as a balance point to that super sweetness in that style of beer. Uh, like yeah. the, the Newberg conspiracy is a Russian Imperial stout um, that they do. And that one's really, really good. Um, <clears throat> so explain this, this portion of it to me. What, what get, is it? Is it malt that gets it to be this, like whatever type of malt that's being used and like process to get it this dark? Like what makes, how do you get this to happen? Oh yeah, no, it's, it's the type of malt. They, it's the most roasted of the malts. It's okay. Like the darkest roast. It's similar to coffee. Like, um, sure. Malt for beer is similar to coffee. If you roast it longer, it gets darker. Hmm. Texture-wise, though, it's not, like, very thick or anything. No, which is also common of of, of a dry Irish-style stout. Like, Guinness, mm. everyone's like, oh, it's so heavy. It, it's at, no. like, so someone who isn't a, a stout drinker is like, oh, it's so heavy. It's not. It's very yeah. robust in its flavor because it's dark. It almost can taste burnt. Not in a bad way, but that's it's the same thing. Like, you're literally, like, burning the malt. That's how it gets so dark. Um, it's chocolate malt is what they yeah. call it. Um, and uh, the uh, Guinness is actually super light. Like it's a lot lighter, less calories, like let lighter in body than a lot of much lighter colored beers uh, that you wouldn't associate with being necessarily even heavy. Like there's yeah. less calories in Guinness than there are in some like regular old beers. This is, this is quite nice. It's definitely a different sort of experience than I think what the average American drinker has even ones that like darker beers this is not like most of those beers not to say it's better or worse just different i it's funny like i i almost want to blind taste test beers like this because like i feel like 
knowing, like seeing it, you're you're anticipating so much from what it's going to feel and taste like, but it doesn't do either of those things if you yeah. close your eyes. <laughs> it's very odd. Like I feel like I would I would defy you if you're not like you know someone like you or like someone who's like super into all the various styles of beer to try this without seeing it and tell me immediately that it's this dark color. Oh, so like if you like literally blind t- yeah. taste tests, like yeah. not just you didn't know whose beer it was mm-hmm. or what style, like to actually not even look at it and taste. I mean, I would definitely know because it is so, the malt is so dark and it's so dry. It, it, it has to be chocolate malt. Like it does. Yeah. I like, um, like if I were to smell it first, I, I would get stout. But if, if I were to just immediately take a sip of it, I feel like I wouldn't. Hmm. Very interesting. I like it. Um, I'm going to go two thuckles, though, because as, for me, like, this is pretty much it. <laughs> like, there's not really much more you can do for me with regards to a stout, unless something really knocks my socks off at some point. But, no, uh, I concur. I think that I, I would go two thuckles as well, because I think they're – this is a style of beer that's easy to get wrong. And mm-hmm. even if you get it super right, I think there's kind of – a glass ceiling on how high it can go. There's a, there's a threshold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like th- this isn't like, it's good. Everything. They, they've never made a bad beer. Like you could like or dislike one of their beers, but I've never drank a beer of theirs. That's like, you'd be like, Oh, this is terrible. You know? Yeah. Like there was one that I just won't drink. Cause like, I just don't like the flavor. And it. it's not that it's a bad beer. It is a, it was a uh, oyster stout. It was super salty. Was not a fan. Weird, but it's not because it's bad. It's just that that flavor doesn't work. Not, I've had other going for. similar styles of beer from other breweries. Don't like that style. Won't drink them. In. Sure, so, interesting. Um, but no, like everything they make is with quality. This one isn't the most knock it out of the park. I mean, honestly, like Guinness is a better version of mm. this beer. Guinness is a really good beer. It may not be for you, but within the category of an Irish stout, Guinness is really good. Yeah. Um, so, but even with still with that, like I would honestly, I wouldn't give like Guinness more than three suckles. I, it does. Like, I don't know if I could drink a beer of that style that would go to four. Yeah. Like, there might be some Irish brewery I've never heard of in some small town in Ireland that if I drank it on tap, it was a brand new keg. Maybe that would like, I would see sunshine and rainbows and, and awakening. Yes. <laughs> but short of that experience, I don't know how you could go really much higher than Guinness. Is that or a Lucky some Charms reason. pun? No. Not intentionally. <laughs> not intentionally, so. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. So we're we're kind of in the same boat there. Dual dual thuckles. I did realize though in this conversation that when we start when we do have our brewery and we're making doubles, triples, and quads. We should be calling them. They're, I mean, they're they're going to be double thuckles, right? They're going to be triple thuckle, quad thuckle, quad thuckle beers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm a little disappointed that you were so limited. Yet you have to think much bigger than that, darling, mm. um, to go all in- Inception on you. But um, uh, hey, I'm always ready for that. Why wouldn't we do the quint thuckle? Like, wh- who? Why would we stop at triple or, or quadruple? Can Those you say that again? Quint thuckle. Yeah, it really just sounds like you're saying something with a lisp. <laughs> I thought you just like really appreciated that. Like, oh, I didn't think of it that way. It's like you wanted me to say it again. Um, uh, but, uh, I'm with you. I'm okay with that. Those have been done before. We need to do Oct- the first quiz. Octothuckle. <laughs> Goro. <laughs> That's what we'll actually call the beer. Can it's we, the Goro we, Octothuckle. Well, we can. We can. We can put that. <laughs> Put that picture of me and Dominic from <laughs> yeah from uh, what's it called? <laughs> what, what even was that Halloween? No, we were just no, no, drinking. It was a couple weeks ago. Um, uh, New Year's. Was, oh, I think it was Christmas, Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve? One of those. I wasn't days. expecting to get a uh, a Bielsi Goro cosplay in the middle of my holiday, but <laughs> there it was. There well, my was. sister, I don't know I'm why about it. It must have been. It was either Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, uh, like but at night because um, I remember. Uh, I don't know what made my sister think she wanted to put my hair into a high ponytail. And I was like, okay, go for it. I don't really care. And she had like a holiday, like hair scrunchy thing. <laughs> and it was like, had like, like ornament type of like bobble things on it. Sure. <laughs> so she put my hair up like that. And I was like, they're like, oh, it's kind of like a samurai or whatever. I said, no, what I think of is Goro. Yeah. And I was like, Dominic, come here. I need your arms. (laughs) He's 
to buy here, I need you. No questions, please. <laughs> no, as soon as I told him, he's like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we took the picture of, you know, me with my arms up and his with his arms lower. So it looked like, I looked like Prince Cora. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. That was good. I feel like I've seen that movie more recently than I should have. <laughs> Either that, or it just it just occupies more well, real estate than it should. Did you in my brain? Well, we watched the new one last yeah. year for the. I don't show. think I rewatched the old, original. But that's what I was going to ask: is if did you rewatch that one before? No. Or after? I mean, I would happily rewatch the original. Yeah. But anyway, shall we get into some news and nuggets? Sure. So, what do you got for us? So, Avatar at the box office hit me with this. What, what's uh, what's happening? What, right, where so are our numbers? It, this it's is like number of, four. Is it like number four globally or all time? I mean. Um, something like that. So this is kind of a bigger, like farther reaching story. Uh, this was from today or yesterday, yesterday on variety, um, written by Zach Scharf. The headline is James Cameron praises avatar two nearing 2 billion quote enough with streaming already. I'm tired of sitting on my ass. <laughs> Mo- movie maker doesn't prefer streaming. What a shocking thing. I, I know. <laughs> um, but you know, he is an old school box. I mean, he, for a large portion of our lives, defined the box office. No? Sure. Yeah. Um, so, um, anyway, listen, yeah. there's no, there's no bigger advocate for going to see a movie in the theater than me. Well, I mean, I would say Martin Scorsese, but yeah, but no, there's a, there's a certain <laughs> level of like pretentiousness. I mean, but he just, also sold out and made something for fucking Netflix. <laughs> he, yeah. He also made the Irishman and maybe should sit down for a minute. Like that was, well, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know mm-hmm. that was rough. Uh, anyway, let's, three hours. Let's, I'm not forgetting back. Let's skim through this. It's almost four hours, I think, wasn't it? I don't even want to think about it. Uh, We're giving it more time than it already has taken up. That's a good point. As, uh, <laughs> let's skim through this article. How how long was our episode on it? Was it all, as it, long? I'm pretty sure it was shorter movie. than the movie, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, Probably. As Avatar The Way of Water gets closer to the $2 billion mark at the Worldwide Box Office, James Cameron says it's a reminder that moviegoers still value the theatrical experience in an era of streaming dominance. Cameron spoke with Variety during the official digital pre-show for the Golden Globes, reacted to the Avatar sequel's box office dominance. The Way of Water has earned over $1.7 billion and currently ranks as the seventh highest grossing film ever. Yeah. With its international box office total over $1.2 billion, the film ranks as the fifth biggest international release behind only Avatar, Avengers Endgame, Titanic, and Avengers Infinity War. That means Cameron has three of the top five international releases in history. That's, uh, pretty, that's pretty great. I'm not thinking of it in those terms, Cameron said uh, when told the stat. I'm thinking of it in terms of we're going back to theaters around the world. They're even going back to theaters in China where they're having this big COVID surge. We're saying as a society, we need this. We need to go to theaters. Enough with the streaming already. I'm tired of sitting on my ass. Although I will, I will push back slightly because I'm, I'm not sure aware. Of, oh yeah, I'm not aware of standing room only <laughs> theaters. So I, got, I would not want to stand for three hours and ten minutes of this movie, no matter how much I like. Later in the interview, Cameron addressed moviegoers who text during films. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> well, what he, I want to know what he said to, said about you. Just try, uh, wow, I try not to. <laughs> I just it was not relevant to this. No, yeah, you know we're gonna read every fucking word in this article now. <laughs> I was trying to edit for brevity, but later in the interview, Cameron addressed moviegoers who text during films at the theater. "Quote: They're missing the point." Unquote. The director said. Quote, when we go to the movies, we make a deal with ourselves to have undivided attention for a couple of hours. It's about immersing yourself, choosing to commit to that ahead of time, unquote. Cameron yeah. said on not wrong. last week's episode of Who's Talking with Chris Wallace that Avatar The Way of Water will turn the profit it needs to in order to get the remainder of this franchise sequels made. Quote, it looks like with the momentum that the film has now that we'll easily pass our break even in the next few days. So it looks like I can't wiggle out of this and I'm going to have to do these other sequels, Cameron said. I know what I'm going to be doing the next six or seven years. He added, that's, a, "What's up? That's pretty cool. I mean, I, I, I'm all for it. Like something like this, it doesn't. It, it's unprecedented, right? Like having a movie this big as a sequel this many years later from a movie that was the number one. Like, I mean, that's it's it's such an awesome thing to be happening. I will say, like, it does. But like, I was joking before, like the whole like streaming versus movie, like." All of those arguments, those conversations, they do really annoy me because I don't think that they they matter. Like, ultimately, it wasn't like people went back to the movie theater to see this. It was like they were excited about it and they watched it where it was. That's what happened. It's not like they were... There's an element of that, but I, I, I will be honest, as much as I am a theater guy in res- with respect to that, um, this has this whole you know period of time has brought to my 
you know, way of life as well as like, just frankly, what my lifestyle is now currently, I'm not going to go to the theater for every single little thing. Like there are some movies that I'll be okay with seeing as a streaming option or sure. waiting until it comes out. But a movie like this, a movie like Top Gun, a movie like some of the Marvel movies, I very mm-hmm. much want to see them in a uh, Star Wars. Like I want to see them in theaters because they're meant to be big and bombastic. You don't yeah. need to see a period piece that's going to be nominated for a bunch of Oscars in a theater. If you want to, by all means. But to me, I don't feel like I necessarily have to crave that experience. I'd be just as comfortable sitting down and watching it in my own house. Whereas this movie, obviously I'll enjoy seeing it when it comes out on mm-hmm. streaming, but I wanted to see it in a theater. I wanted to see it in an IMAX theater. I was going to. It just yeah, just didn't, didn't work out because the only time I could go, the show was sold out. And I was like, fuck. Yeah. So... Yeah, no, it's it's definitely it's definitely in a certain class where like that. I feel like m- more people would be like, I want to see this in the theater than the usual folks. Like me personally, I I just prefer going to the movie theater because I think that I I, I enjoy sitting in the theater chairs. I enjoy seeing the gigantic screen. Yeah. I do. I am very much all about disconnecting f- from everything else for those couple of hours and not like and it. I love it. Um, that being said, I have curated a spot in my home that makes it a perfect movie watching experience with the lights off and the shades closed so that no light is really coming in the surround sound system set up the comfortable chairs the incredible screen that is better than a movie theater screen like there is really no question about an OLED screen is better than like the picture is better (laughs) it's just smaller (laughs) in my in my in my case um but like so like i have it's i have the perfect way to watch them at home and it's really more about how i feel like you watch it and that's i i I love going to the theater and i would never give it up um i for the past obviously a couple years i've had to under whether it be for sickness or not being able to get out (laughs) like multiverse of madness is the only marvel movie i haven't seen in theaters Mm. i think right oh no eternals too did that even go to theaters i don't even know uh i believe so okay so those two i didn't see because of like the timing but like I I don't even really, because of the way that I set up my space, I didn't even remember that I didn't see Multiverse of Madness in the theaters until until we were just talking about going mm-hmm. to the movies. Um, but yeah, I still want to see it there. Yeah, I mean, I, don't get me wrong. It's not like I won't enjoy going to the theater to see other things. It's just not, it like, doesn't feel like a necessity for mm-hmm. smaller movies, I guess I'll, I'll say. Yeah, like I, I, I can see like if for a lot of, the thing is, for me, like I would still go. I would probably, provided I have the time, I would go to the movie theater for as many movies as possible. I, like I used to go, at minimum once a week, up to three times a week to the movies. Like that yeah. was just what what I did when I had that kind R- of bandwidth. But R- now, R- movie pass. <laughs> but now, like I don't know. It's I actually being able like when something is on streaming and in theaters. Like if it's a movie that I'm excited about, I'll still see it in theaters. But being able to not be like blocked from viewing it because I can't schedule around it is also super valuable to me. Yeah. Uh, well, the last bit of this story, I think, is part of why I picked this specific story to, to go with um, was the point is we're going to be okay. I'm sure that we'll have a discussion soon with. Thanks, him. James. <laughs> I don't think that's what he meant. (laughs) I'm sure that we'll have a discussion soon with the top folks at Disney about the game plan going forward for Avatar 3, which is already in the can. We've already captured and photographed the whole film, so we're in extended post-production to do all of that CGI magic. And then Mm -hmm. Avatar 4 and 5 are both written. We even have some before in the can as well. We've begun a franchise at this point. We've begun a saga that can now play out over multiple films. That's cool. So um, there's basically your update on where that's all at. I think tentatively, I don't know if they're still married to that date. And obviously all these movie studios, Disney first and foremost, uh, moves these things all around. But I know Mm -hmm. pre pandemic, the way they had scheduled it was um, back when they still made star Wars movies that there was (laughs) (laughs) every other (laughs) (laughs) grow up, put on your big boy pants and make movies again. The shows are great. Yeah, it's fine. I'm not saying you have to stop doing the shows. No. But you also have to do movies. You do. Doesn't mean you have to do it every year, every other year, but you need to start rolling a camera on one eventually. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, That would be ideal. So at that time, 
they had every December booked. One year it was going to be a Star Wars. One year it was going to be an Avatar. One year it was going to be a Star Wars. One year it was going to be an Avatar. They're clearly not doing that anymore. But tentatively, I would assume that December of 2024 is when the next Avatar will come out. Yeah, that that tracks. So, and which is and also by doing so, they'll be able to actually fit another one probably by 26. Well, I think that's that's the type of of timeline that they would, yeah. I think like to do, and I think. That will allow them. I mean, if we talked about Marvel fatigue and Star Wars okay. fatigue, there would probably correctly be Avatar fatigue if you put one out every fucking December. Oh yeah, um, and because you're going to lose. Like part of what makes both of these movies such an event is that it is an event. It's mm-hmm. not a routine part of your schedule. It is something that you waited twelve years to get the first Avatar from the last movie he had made, and then you waited. Uh, 13 years to get the next one. <laughs> yeah. So um, we're not going to wait that long again. He's not going to make movies till he's 100. And that's right. okay, but waiting two or three years will give you enough time where you'll want to scratch that itch again. Mm-hmm. Not only that, but you'll also probably be like itching to like rewatch a previous one or multiple previous entries like in preparation for, which is always exciting. Yeah, you're going to have to block out your whole like Thanksgiving week to watch the first two before the third one comes out. Yeah. We, I, I do not think we'll be able to do a uh, Batman trilogy style viewing <laughs> for Avatar films. Oh my God. Can you imagine the, the concluding Avatar 5? <laughs> you know, they'd have to do it at a hotel. They'd have yeah. to have a hotel that had like a massive conference room that you could set up like a theater set up at and like, okay, everyone. Or like a cruise, they could do it on like, oh, wait, that would actually. Be- Ooh cool idea take one of those mega yacht like not mega yeah. yacht, like mega cruise lines and you put a screen on the back one of those ones with a huge superstructure mm-hmm. and every night you pull into a port and they project it onto the back yes of the cruise ship yes and then you know you can sleep and rest and recover and enjoy the sunlight the next night a Dude. five-day cruise of avatars i would actually i honestly i would do that <laughs> it's a five it's a five-day cruise towards new zealand and then when you get there, you watch all of the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> That's for the way home. <laughs> I would like to do. Uh, I would like to watch the Lord of the Rings within a medieval times, but also be served the entire time. <laughs> Red meat, malt, malt beer, yeah. <laughs> pipes. It comes in pipes. <laughs> no, I said pipes. Oh, but pipes. pipes. But pipes the also. Pipes. Obviously. Sure, sure. Just, uh, man, I don't know. I'm all on that. Speaking of Disney. Uh, that new Quantum Mania trailer dropped. Yes, uh, during the just dreadful national championship game, that was the one of the worst blowouts of college football that I'm even aware of, <laughs> let alone for a bowl slash playoff game. Um, but yeah, they they dropped the the newest trailer. This one is probably guilty to an extent of the thing we don't like that shows a little bit too yeah. much. But yep. I think it's okay. I don't think it was egregious. Yeah, I do wonder. I think we already knew to a certain extent that's the way it was going to go anyway, so... Sure, it's just like, there's a lot that you can... I mean, and and they're pretty good with their trailers usually of, like, misdirection, but there's, like, some things in there where you're like, oh, I I know where a couple... I feel like I know where a couple of these things are going that I wish I didn't know exactly, but that's okay. I'm still excited about it. It looks great. Yes. Uh, It looks intense. It looks uh, Avengers-level, like, implications. I'm... I'm ready for it. And it definitely takes the baton from I think we've all been super excited for what the first iteration of Kang was going to be in mm-hmm. one of the the movies we all obviously enjoyed his introduction in Loki. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert for that if you haven't seen that show yet and what are you waiting for? The second season is coming out not terribly long from now. Um, That's so exciting too. I, I think forgot what- that that was like I knew they were making, but I forgot that it was like coming fairly mm-hmm. soon. And that I saw it was like kind of like a Disney like commercial for like the things that are. It was like Avatar and Star yeah. Wars and Marvel and all the other Willow and all the other things that they're doing. It was like, oh, that's right. If, like Loki is like within the next few months. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, that's I'm, exciting. I'm a little surprised that Kang wasn't in any of the Phase Four films. Yeah, even in like a post credit Thanos grabbing his gauntlet type of way right yeah it's interesting 
Because this I one kicks know. off phase five. Oh, it does. That's right. Yeah, that's a good point. Why? Well, I guess also like uh, was the, did the timeline get shifted around at all as far as what got released? Because I think Loki... stuff just got pushed back. Oh, okay, I, like I the Eternals wondering. got pushed back, and Black Widow got pushed back, but mm-hmm. nothing changed as far as release order. I don't believe. Oh, okay. Yeah, interesting. But yeah, that is that is strange. But we'll see. I mean, this is obviously going to be a big deal. I, I think. What's cool about it too, like to really like to put it into context, is it, it's the third Ant Man movie. So it's it's also like if you just isolate this trilogy of movies, like usually you know a, a trilogy is all has its own sort of arc going on versus the giant arc that all of the the, the Marvel movies at large are doing. So like there's a lot. I feel like there's a lot to probably digest here with like where Scott Lang is at and like how his character has progressed. Like this whole looking back on the time that he's lost, like that's obviously going to be a strong theme throughout the the movie, and rightfully so. Like we haven't really like it's not just the snap; it's also like the prison time. Like it's there's a lot <laughs> yeah. like to 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 unpack for that character, and like he it's it would make sense like. Anybody might want the last five years back, but it would make sense that like he feels like he lost even more than that, and he would be a perfect target for wanting to unwind certain aspects of the timeline. Well, I think no, no evidence, you know, more concrete than the fact that they're now on their third actress playing his daughter. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember you. <laughs> well, it came to the thing where I was reading a little thing about the, the trailer yesterday, and I was like, "Hang on a second. The third actress, and then I like thought for a second, I was like, "Yeah, why didn't when I saw the trailer, did it not register that that's clearly not the same actress who mm-hmm. was playing his daughter in Endgame?" Which also raised the question, "Why?" Sure. <laughs> uh, another question: Is it intentional, and does it have something to do with timelines? This wouldn't be the first time that they've recast something I know. like this, so I'm but assuming that it was just. If we're gonna go in though with. <laughs> the first the first time they did it was because like it was like three years after they made the movie and they wanted her to have aged more than that. So yeah. that's that's fair. Oh man, I'm I'm excited for that. that's mid February. Yeah, it's like I think this is it the seventeenth. I want to say amazing, amazing. I can I cannot wait. I'm very pumped for that. I was um, after last week's episode. I was thinking back about it. Like I still I feel like Oppenheimer slightly ekes out over this one. Like as far as like anticipation for the year, but like this one's also really close, so I'm definitely clouded by it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like oh, I it's always it. it's always easier to get excited for something that like you can physically see is within your reach. As yeah, as something that like you know you're gonna be excited for, but it's like you can't build a hype machine for like six months or whatever. Like, yeah, well, especially when you have something else to distract you in the meantime. Mm-hmm. Probably several something else's something for else. Something. <laughs> Spider. It's mad. like searches. <laughs> What's that? That's like Surgeon's General. Yes. Well, I was, my, my example is always Spider's Man. <laughs> Spider's Man. Oh, man. Well, speaking of things that uh, are on the like immediate horizon that are sneaking up on me, the uh, the Last of Us is Sunday. That's correct. And I'm so excited. It looks. I watched a trailer uh, moments before we recorded that I must have missed. Mm. That. Pulled on a one little Easter egg from the second one okay. and as, as part of a musical cue that was just so wonderful. And like, was it that looks the, that song that she plays or whatever. So good. Yeah. And it looks incredible. Like, it looks, it to me looks like they are, it's like maybe one of the first things that's really going to do justice for like transposing the game to just just the storytelling and that's mostly because and i said i think i said it before like i feel like the director of the game is one of my favorite film directors because of how good that game is and yeah, how I mean, incredible the story is directing a game is still directing right like, yeah it, it's I mean, got it's not exactly the same but there's enough overlap it's just like if, you know in a world so bloated with like zombie movies or post-apocalyptic movies or like where the walking dead, like just all of that stuff f- to stand out is quite the feat. And like, this is like the story that they have to tell is so far above and beyond any of those. 
that I'm really excited that you're going to get to experience it soon, even because I have not given you that PS3 to play the first game on yet. That's okay. Um, uh, I was thinking about texting you and Brian yesterday because I know you both love that game series so much. Him even more so than your themes, um, if that's possible. Mm. But um, the reviews, were, the embargo lifted yesterday. Um, so I am, I, I'm not what I'm not listening or lo- like looking at anything. So you you can tell me because I know you won't. Yeah, well, I'm just gonna read you uh, a headline. I what I what I've seen. I haven't read anything yet. I've just seen the buzz around it. So I will read you because I tabbed the story. I'm I'm going to read it because it's a spoiler free preview. Um, Alan Seppenwalls came out yesterday from Rolling Stone. Sorry. My close personal friend, Alan Seppenwalls, sure. um, came out yesterday um, <laughs> on the Rolling Stone. Uh, the headline is The Last of Us, a finer version of The Walking Dead and HBO's next big game. Sure. Now, I will say that he said on the front end, that's all I'm going to read. Uh, he said on the front end that he never played the game and mm. he adored the show. He goes, so he, cool. goes, I, he goes, I will be curious to see how people who've played feel about this. He goes, but as just as far as television goes. He goes, I can't speak to how it adapts the story, but on its own, he said it's a fantastic show. I I was listening to like a short, one of those teases from like, I think it was the showrunner. I don't remember who it was. Director, showrunner, whatever it is. And they were like, we are like, there's already a perfect story there. We're mm-hmm. not trying to like fuck with that, basically. <laughs> and it was like, we, we just have more time. So we're going to fill in the gaps with more. Well, we've while, talked about it while in, keeping true to it, and like that sounds amazing. To me. We've talked about it in the past. I forgot what it was specifically. We discussed that adaptation is its own skill, right? Mm-hmm. Striking the balance between being true to what was already there while also being able to put your own touch on it in a way that doesn't corrupt that, right? Or and it seems uh, it's interesting because, like, from the trailer, there's also like there's clips that are part of storylines in the DLC that came out for the game afterwards that were like prequel things. So okay. like to see how they'll actually unfold that, whether it's like through flashback sequences or maybe do it in order. I'm really curious to see how it goes. I assume yeah. it'll be a flashback episode, like three episodes in when there's this big reveal that they'll go back to that and then <laughs> go through and tell you how we got here, basically. But like that would be, I mean, they could, however they want to do it, I say, go, go nuts. Well, anyway, the thing I was going to say with you and Brian was I was thinking about, I haven't decided yet how I think it'll work best, but I was almost wondering, does it make sense to not talk to you guys at all until the whole season ends? And then compare and contrast. Like, I'm not going to stop you guys from talking about it, but like, Maybe get the three of us on for a special episode um, yeah. and just talk about what we thought about the show. And you guys could give me your compare and contrast to the game. Yeah, I think that would, that, that should be that would be fun. I feel like we should we should probably check in on it weekly, but like without I won't go any further than where the episode has been. Yeah, has gone. Um, but yeah, uh, that sounds that sounds perfect for us. <laughs> yeah, so I'm very excited. I was. I was like, January 15th, isn't that like Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> One, two, <laughs> yeah. Sunday. Is. That's like, uh, there's a there's a great episode of Friends where <laughs> Joey is telling Chandler, he's like, it's Thursday. Thursday. If you can't remember that, it's easy. Just think about it. It's the third day. And Chandler's like, what? Because Monday, one day. Tuesday, two day. Wednesday? When? When the hell? What day? Thursday! The third day! <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it's a wonderful show. Uh, that is... Oh, no, I actually do have one. I, I, I didn't... I meant to go back and look for it, but um, you were... Were you a fan of Community? I don't remember. No, I never... I mean, I've uh, seen a couple episodes, but I never okay. watched it. Uh, I, bl- I, I don't know if it was that they are shooting the movie, or the movie has a potential release. There was, mo- there was news about the Community movie. I did see something several weeks ago about that, but because I'm not plugged into that particular thing, it sure. kind of washed over me without really sticking. But I was like, when I heard that, I was like, oh, this is a perfect reason for me to rewatch Community, which I've kind of been looking for a reason to do that anyway. Because all, I, all eight seasons of Community? Is there that many? I, I, I had trailed off after, I think, like the third. The show takes a dip. There's like a whole writer thing that happens. Um, I don't really remember. I think they it was fired, scandalous. They fired Chevy Chase. 
Well, no, well, yeah, that was something else. No, I, I'm saying that also happened to the Titans. That did, that did also happen. Yeah, it didn't, it's, it's Dan Harmon, right? Like, yes. he, did, he did something annoying yeah. at some point. Yeah. Again, but, I don't remember because it's not a show I watched, so it wasn't like, but I remember there being some scandal involving him. Yeah. So. Well, I might get back to that because it's very silly. Uh, I think we could do some consumption. Yeah, I think we can keep the news brief this week. I, uh, I'm going to kick us off here just before... Th- Recording this episode, we finished the first season of Wednesday to okay. find that they have greenlit. When's They're going to move forward with the second. <laughs> when the hell was that? <laughs> uh, they are going to move forward with the second season, which is cool. Really, it was it was very entertaining. Like it's it kind of had this. Um, it's got like the it's just the right level of spookiness, like family friendly spookiness. I feel like maybe a little bit too, maybe a little bit outside of the realm of family friendly, but it's it's like it's sitting in there. Uh, it's got like kind of Riverdale vibes with some of the themes and some of the characters and some of the campiness, but all in all, it's just like a fun, unique story within a universe that is semi like established, but you're focusing on one character of that universe and like diving deeper into them, which was, it was cool. (laughs) And and the way that they, I feel like from episode to episode, I was, I was invested. There was maybe like a, like a half episode lull somewhere in the like two thirds of the way through that I was just like checked my phone, like not fully engaged, but like otherwise eight episodes hour ish long, each fun characters, silly story, like predictable ish. Like not all of the pieces are predictable, but like enough of it where you like, yeah, I see that coming or, Oh, that was kind of cool. Or like, I don't know, 20 minutes before something happens, you're like, I know where this is going. (laughs) But like, that's fine. I'm fine with that. And uh, I don't know why, but Thing is is hilarious to me. Really? Just this disembodied, this hand, just the physics of Thing is incredible because they make zero sense. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a flip. I love that. That's that's (laughs) probably like the fact that he can like strangle somebody. Is without amazing forearm to me. muscles, with a, <laughs> it's so good, <laughs> and uh, I don't know like how they make it like this charming character that you actually feel for at random times throughout the show. Like, good on them, especially considering it doesn't speak, right? No, he he signs. Oh, okay, that's <laughs> <laughs> what would you say? Like American sign language, or sometimes there's some there is some spelling. And then there's definitely things that he's just doing that, like, Wednesday understands. Like pointing. But then, like, character, <laughs> Yeah, pointing. Characters that uh, spend enough time with him that they start to understand him, too. Which is pretty great. So this is like a Stewie thing where, like, <laughs> if you're too close to him, you don't understand him. But if you're far enough away, <laughs> you do. <laughs> like, Maybe. So that, was, that was the joke they did when, um, when Cleveland and Loretta got divorced uh-huh. they went to talk to brian and stewie were trying to get them back together i don't remember why now um and <laughs> they're like knocked on her door and they're waiting and stewie's like hang on a second is she or i, I think brian said is she one of those people who's like gonna be close enough to you where they don't understand you <laughs> or far enough away where they understand you totally or is it gonna be one of those situations where they're in the middle where they get the gist of what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> uh, Self awareness in television is funny. Yes, I like that. But uh, anyway, I would if you have if you're at all interested, it's it's fun. I gotta be honest, the Adams family just never really did anything for me. Yeah, that's that's I, fine. I don't I don't know why. I know people love it. Um, I don't actively dislike it. It just never. I was really I was kind of in the same boat. Like uh, maybe a little bit more in the there. It, there's definitely like a nostalgic draw for me. Like there's. I, I've definitely watched the the movies and what well, Adam Family and Adam's Family Values like those. Mm. I watched those. I've definitely watched like some of the original material like way back when, but um, it was never something that I was like super into. But I had seen enough of it that this piqued my interest because like I'm familiar with the characters, I'm familiar with like the themes and such, and that I don't know. Everybody they seem like they're they're having a good time in there, and it was it was fun. She's. Uh, 
very consistent at playing Wednesday. And I'm just like, you must have had a horrendous stiff neck at the end of filming, just <laughs> by by nature of being so into this character. <laughs> you know, it's funny, um, during the whole promotional lead up to that show, like, I just didn't care, but you see her face as Wednesday all the time. Mm-hmm. Never clicked for me that it was the girl from that Scream movie. Yeah. No, uh, Jenna like, something, uh, Ortega. Or, Ortega. Right? Yeah, yeah. The other day, someone, like, it was like, and I knew that, saw the name too. Never registered, yeah. and so I was like Jenna Ortega, who was in Scream last year. Was like, oh yeah, duh, that's ob- very obviously her. Why did that never register one percent in my? Brain? She's also like a Disney kid, right? Like a post our generation Disney kid, if you say so. Um, but yeah, I, I I did the same thing. We started. I'm like, I I I I know this person. I am to be time, and like immediately, I was like, oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I. As far I definitely saw, if not all, then most of the movie with Raul Julia and yeah. Angelica Houston. Um, Raul Julia cracked me up as yes as Gomez in that movie, but beyond that, I just don't. I don't know. I just never. I know a lot of people of similarish age to us have lifelong crushes for Christina Ricci because of her portrayal of Wednesday in that movie. Mm-hmm. Was Christopher Lloyd? Yes, Uncle Fester. Yeah. Beyond those things that I just said, I I have nothing. <laughs> yeah. I think what, what's cool though about this this like pseudo revival of it is that like it's perfectly acceptable. Like you could perfect you could watch it without having any context. That's but cool. if you have some like, like me, there's like oh like th- that thing that I know about or like this thing which is fun. But I bet you if you're like super into it, there's probably a lot for you there as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was it was good. The uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Luis Gu- Guzman. Guzman. Oh, that's right. I forgot he's Gomez. Right? Plays Gomez. Also very silly. Barely, barely in it. Like the other, the other core Adams family characters are barely in it. Oh, but okay. when they are in it, they are like giving a hundred percent. The the mother is someone famous too, right? Uh, was it Catherine Zeta Jones? Oh, okay. I think I don't remember. Um, and do, do you know who plays Uncle Fester? In no, that, that I have no idea. <laughs> it's Fred Armisen. <laughs> oh, really? I had no idea. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, Christina Ricci is also in the show as a different character. Interesting. Which is cool. Um, why is it not... Why are they not readily available to me on IMDb? I don't know. Wednesday. Wed- Wednesday. I hate Christ. that word. Morticia. Actress. Yes, it is Catherine Zeta Chance. Okay. Cool. Anyway. That was one. That was one. What are you? Uh, what's the thing that you're consuming? Well, I'll also go back to something I consumed right before, and that was delicious steak tacos. Oh, nice! Um, little carne asada. I too had beef. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Car- carne asada, you know, marinated and all that fun sure. stuff. Um, little like street taco style with like the little corn um, yeah. rounds. You know, oh, so good. I so love that. Good. It was a very Mexican themed week. I also. Went to a Mexican restaurant for dinner on Saturday. And Nothing wrong had, with that. No, not at all. And had, I believe we talked about it roughly a year ago, that that meal, it was the same restaurant. Like They serve it in like the huge mortar and pestle bowl thing. Yes. It comes out piping hot. It has all the different like meats and cheese and uh, cactus um, and yes. jalapenos and Oh my god, it's so fucking good. <laughs> I, I, I really I just have to come spend the weekend with you and get yeah, some we'll gorgonzola to, fries one night and get some We'll get gorgonzola, we'll eat Italian one night, we'll eat Mexican the other night. I love You'll it. gain ten pounds, it'll be delightful. Yeah. I mean pff, it's just like every other weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I we uh, we have a place nearby called Mexi Tacos that we order from <laughs> Pretty much every week, it's it's fantastic. Which is crazy because when they opened, it was like this is fine, and then like six months later, it's like this place is legit. Like <laughs> they really came into their own. I uh, have not brought myself to try Esperitos. Is that a place or a thing? It's a place. Okay. Formerly, in the spot where it is occupying on the street was a restaurant called Esposito's, which moved uh... diagonally across the street. And they now they have do that a intentionally? Real... Yes. Oh. Considering Esperitos is not a thing, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it could have been a last name. <laughs> like Espositos. No. 
it's not. <laughs> it's the Why same ask? people. Yeah. Oh. But uh, I'll maybe I'll try one. It seems more. It seems more like fast foodie style, like a, like a Chipotle or like Qdoba style. Like go up, order your your business, uh, tell them what you want in the bowl. I'm more about the Mexican restaurant. I'm not about the yeah. Or I'm don't get me wrong. Like I've enjoyed Chipotle in the past, but like it's the thing. I it's the problem I have with like people who like crave like Taco Bell. I know you like Taco Bell. I, oh yeah. It's just like to me, especially like where we live, like. There's always a Mexican restaurant within five minutes of wherever you are. No, Taco, Taco Bell is a, is perfectly acceptable if you're on a road trip or it's after midnight. Sure, but if you're having it outside of those bounds, and even still, yeah. like I'd rather have other fast foods than that. Um, mm. But to me, I'm like, why would you go to Taco Bell when there are so many good Mexican restaurants? Sure. Like same thing with like like why would you ever eat Domino's in New York unless it's 3 a.m. and you're blasted. No, no unless. I, I challenge that. No unless. Why would you ever? Well, sure. But my point is... Make I, your I own pizza. Worst like case scenario, make your own. There's also, <laughs> like, a Papa John's and Pizza Hut, like, not far from, like, where I live. And it's like, there are 400 pizzerias <sighs> yeah. that are real pizza. And, like, those other places aren't open until fucking 3 in the morning like Domino's is. So, like, you don't even have that excuse. Yeah. Like, if why it, would you ever, like, if you live in, I don't know, Arkansas, and there's no actual pizzerias, like, go to town. If that's what makes you happy, I'm not, not even the slightest bit of judgment. Like, honestly, if mm. that's what makes you happy, go for it. But if you have real pizza, why would you ever eat the other stuff? Yeah, there is I, no excuse at that. I, I don't know. Like, I, maybe, I, because I can't, I've had them, and they make me want to vomit. Like, the if it's really, it is absolutely disgusting. Like, it's absolutely, it's the most gross thing you can get. But if you, for whatever reason you like that, I'm assuming you have, to, you have to agree with me that you're not getting that when you're craving pizza. You're getting that when you're craving that. Similar to Taco Bell. You don't get Taco Bell when you're craving Mexican food. You go sure, to Taco Bell why, when like, you're craving Taco Bell. Uh, no, I, I don't, like, if I, I would never, honestly, I haven't, I, I've gotten Taco Bell once in the past, like, decade. Mm-hmm. And it was because Wendy's had closed. Sure. <laughs> and it was two in the morning. <laughs> like that was the only reason I got it, okay. and I hadn't eaten in like eight hours. Well, well but that, that, that also tracks though. You're not you you weren't going there for Mexican food. Is what I'm getting at. But if well, it's it's about 500 feet from the Mexican place I'm talking about. If that was open, I would have honestly at two in the morning sat down and eat Mexican food. At sure, that point. sure. Like because it's it's real Mexican food is that delicious? Like it is. Oh god, so good. So I just I don't understand how these places. Exist sometimes, <sighs> dude. Now At least I don't understand about... how they exist. Where they exist, I'll say that. We, you got me thinking about this damn restaurant, Max Tacos, that we love. So we, we came out. We end up ordering like we've we've dabbled in a few other options on the menu, but we have like this like our go to, which is like we get these veggie enchiladas with green sauce. We've got this chicken Aztec quesadilla, which is mm. like sautéed, like kind of spicy mushrooms and chicken and cheese. It's just unreal with like. Chipotle crema inside. It's so good. And then yuca fries Ooh. as an appetite, which I can eat yuca fries all day. <laughs> yuca fries all, all day. day. <laughs> <laughs> I was just talking about um, like the different types of enchiladas. Cause like, obviously there's like, like the, the five main types of like Mexican food, right? There's like burrito, there's taco, there's enchilada, there's chimichanga. Mm-hmm. Um, and like we were talking about, because she always basically gets the same type of thing. She always gets enchiladas in red sauce. Wait, who does? My mom. I said, oh, your mom. I said, me and my mom were talking about. So oh, gotcha. Like, it, it, I, cut out. it cut out oh, on okay, me. Sorry. I'm sure the rest of the people heard it, though. Yeah. No, that's fine. I, I, said, I said, I often go with enchiladas as well. I like either chicken enchiladas in the green sauce, mm. or I like beef or pork with the red sauce. With the red, yeah. Or, best case scenario... Is one of the red meats with mole sauce. I mole sauce. I'm it's hit or miss for me. Like if it's a really good, it's got to be good. But if yeah. It's, but if it's a good place, then you trust their mole sauce. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. I've made it before. I've never tried. Come out good. But I I prefer some of the other sauces. Well, that was how that conversation ended. Was we should try making mole sauce. So. Ah. No. Oh, it's a good time to be continued. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know how that works out. Yeah, I I, I do love. The smothered nature of the enchilada. 
Yes. Uh, that being said, there's uh, the occasional restaurant that really goes all out. We'll do a smothered burrito. Mm. And uh, especially there's this one place. This is Wahoo. Wahoo's something or other. Wahoo's. <laughs> it's a giant fish on their on their sign. But they are like, they are, it's like a surf taco shop. <laughs> okay. But they they have a smothered burrito that is sick. I had Mr. We... Lee's screaming chicken burrito <laughs> smothered <laughs> smothered in red Jesus sauce. Christ. Uh, I don't know why that threw me off so much. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Lee's screaming <laughs> burrito or whatever the fuck it was. But um, it, it just reminded me you talking about like just the, the smothered burrito mm. uh, in the summer when you and Kim and Elia went down to Atlantic City or Wildwood or wherever the hell it was. Yeah. yeah. Same thing. Wildwood. Um, I mean, they're what half an hour from each other. Um, sure, something like that. So, um, <clears throat> we went to the beach. Oh that yeah, weekend. It was the day you were coming back. Mm-hmm. Your your parents met my family and um, my cousins on my dad's side. Um, and then after we went to dinner with your parents, and uh, we went to a Mexican place. Never heard of it before. My cousin recommended it. Um, they didn't come with us. They had something else. To go. Oh, they were going to a concert that night. I think. Um, so uh, me and my family and, and your parents went to dinner at this Mexican place. It was like a little hole in the wall place. Love it. So good. I ordered uh. a chimichanga and. But honey, I'm in the mood for a chimichanga. If you want a chimichanga, then have a chimichanga. <laughs> I was not prepared. This chimichanga was bigger than my head. Amazing. It was massive. And smoke. Did they, did, they, did they stitch giant tortillas together? To, is it a Frankenstein? I, they must sorts? have made their own tortilla because it was like a, the, Jimmy <laughs> It was like the size of a manhole cover. The, the the tortilla before they wrapped it around and like baked it or fried it, whatever, and then smothered it in sauce. And it was fantastic. Amazing. I have Del- actually seen delightful. a place get some pretty excessive mileage out of a standard. Size tortilla with a steam like table press thing. I understand where they, like, that they stretched can, it. I understand they could do that. This one, this was, I, not, this was not that. I would have loved to have seen it unfurled. This took four grown men. <laughs> I would have <laughs> loved. To, it's, it's, it's like it's like when they present the flag at a military funeral with it takes three people folding it together. Amazing. There's a whole ceremony because two hands are just not enough. Um, <laughs> but. Um, I would have loved to see the tortilla unfurled because just judging by the size of it prepared, I was like, this has to be the biggest tortilla I've ever seen in my life if I were to have seen it Mm -hmm. as a tortilla. You're like, I'm going to have to unwrap this for science. (laughs) No, it was too goddamn delicious. I wasn't going to fucking waste time doing that, but that was a challenge to to eat. It was so fucking good. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. But it was such... I just couldn't believe. I looked around at what some of the other people ordered at the table, and I was like, "That looks like what I'm used to seeing when someone orders enchiladas. That looks like what I'm used to seeing when someone orders the flautas. This thing is from another world. <laughs> this is from Pandora. It is outsized. <laughs> this is a dune sandworm. <laughs> what is going on? Here? Oh, the spice float. This is- <laughs> Amazing. I had uh actually had Mexico Mexico Mexico. No, I had Mexico tacos two days in a row last you week. You had Mexico? Was, I had Mexico two days in a row last week. Uh the first one was a I did do a, a, a pork chimichanga. Why uh, the name is escaping me. It's like the it's like braised with like citrus. Carnitas? Uh no, the um no. That's not what it was called. Damn, there's a there's a word for it. It's two words. I can't it oh crap. Eh, whatever. Oh Ooh, I yeah, I think I know what you're saying. And I just totally draw a blank. Anyway, well. it was there was a it was a that chimichanga. Plus, a that chimichanga. And <laughs> with it, it also had their uh, chipotle crema like like drizzled over the top. Yep. Yep. Oh my so god! Oh my goodness! <laughs> so uh, and I know, oh, like did, I know full they, well that I shouldn't eat the whole thing. Did they sprinkle like some cilantro fresh or something like that? Yes. Too? Oh, of course. Of course. There's no. Re- there is no like. It should not arrive to my door in a plastic container and look or taste that good. Yet it does. Wow. Okay. Which is why we continue to order from there for delivery. It's just wonderful. Oh, it's wonderful. I'll have to remember this the next time I come down. Yeah, well, we're doing we'll, the Oscars, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we can do. Let's do it. Let's do it for that day. Uh, 
what was it a was it an Oscars party or a Halloween joint where I spent just multiple hours in front of the stove making an empanadas? Oh, I don't remember. It might have been pumpkin beer tasting. It might have been, yeah. I, I, I tend, I, I'm so getting better at not overdoing it for a, <laughs> for a thing like that. It's taken us forever, and we still usually overdo it. But you do, you do, you you. you how many people are coming? Six. We'll cook for forty. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's just the lamb. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sides aside. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, uh, considering we had a couple of no-shows for Christmas, hmm. we didn't have a disgustingly overwhelming amount of leftovers. We had I the told p- you about my, my leftover situation, right? Yeah. Okay. I think we had a proper, like, appropriate amount of holiday leftovers. Because you want some. Oh, yeah. You want at least two days worth. It doesn't have to be two consecutive days, but you want at least two days worth of Holiday yeah, I, I would like uh, next year. I, I keep I, I, the last few years I've been meaning to do it on like Thanksgiving because it's the type of food that I'm interested in doing this with. But I wanted to to collect the leftovers and then make like a pie out of mm-hmm. them. Um, I've seen some pretty delicious looking things, but I I always forget. I, it always ends up becoming multiple Thanksgiving sandwiches instead, which is not. I'm not complaining. No, um, never. But a pie would be would be nice. Uh, well, uh you, like, that was a long time. What are we even to... talking about? You had, you had. Oh, what I was gonna go back to was there was this this food truck that we used to go to uh, when I worked at Percolate. Nope, Canvas. Oh no, I went with both places. Anyway, it parked at two different locations in the city. I conveniently worked close to both of them at different times. Nice. <laughs> so it's called Calexico, and their carne asada burrito was outrageous, <laughs> and everybody knew it. And you would go there and like to the point where they would like run out some days and then they would drive away because it was a truck. Oh, um, but flee smoke bomb. They, like so, <laughs> so good that my buddy and multiple other people got food poisoning oh. from it. Okay. And got it again the next week. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> like it's like you, when you have food that's poisoning. A, that, from that's something, a literal abusive relationship. That, <laughs> but when, yeah, when you have food poisoning from something, you generally you like there's things that you sometimes can't eat again, like ever. Sometimes you you're really scarred. My my dad refuses to go to Outback Steakhouse. We used to go there fairly frequently hmm. when like in the early 2000s, and it's been over 15 years since we've gone. Yeah, I I'm with your dad on that one. I don't I don't I don't want to go back there. I don't just we we used to love it. Admittedly, you know that was a different time in our lives. Sure. Um, but we certainly enjoyed a lot of the things on the menu. Um, I don't even remember my dad getting sick. I don't remember there being a conversation about it. And then like ten years later, like I don't know if it's my brother or my sister's like you know you know we haven't been out back steakhouse in a long time. Like not that she was like clamoring for it, but just kind of like observing mm-hmm. like. We used to go often, and then it just cold turkey. But I was like, "Yeah, I got food poisoning. We're, I'm never going again." And I was like, "Oh, okay, <laughs> there it is." I, I never do that. <laughs> your hands. Oh man, um, I had beef bulgogi tonight. It was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I, I genuinely did not expect this conversation to turn into a half hour. Of food. I'm not, I don't regret it. I just did not have that on my bingo card. Oh man. Uh. Oh, uh, one, uh, I guess one note on my consumption. I, we talked about it last week. Espresso. I had made my way like 90% of the way through this bag of what everybody recommended. Yep. And I could not, I could not dial it in. I just couldn't get it right. And then my dad did pick up coffee for me from uh, his favorite place across the street from the pizzeria, Frank and Sells. I, I, I assume that's also the name of the place and not just his friends that work there. <laughs> could be but, both. Um, but he buys me this, like, what must have been a five-pound bag of coffee. Like, it was the coffee they use at their espresso machines when people order espresso. So it's like they, not like they were selling <laughs> bags of coffee. Anyway, got me the whole thing. I opened it up. I'm like, I sure hope this is good. First cup, fantastic. And I was like, wow. Like, I, <laughs> like all, I feel like all of this heartache that I was going through <laughs> trying to make. And it was, it's really good. I do think, though, I may have an issue with heat and pressure in my machine that I can't actually figure out because there's no indicator of heat 
and or pressure. Yeah, I think that was where we, so, if I remember correctly last week, we settled on either you just got the one bad batch, yeah. or it's the, like the you're not getting proper extraction from right. your machine because you can't dial in with the specificity. Yeah, and but I have had, so I did try another bag of coffee, and it also came out pretty good. Both of them were not hot enough, and hmm. that, it, that in itself is a problem. The, yeah. it, it, so I may have to, if I, if I continue down this road, I will be upgrading my espresso machine. <laughs> yeah, it happens. Uh, it's uh, I'm enjoying it. So now, now my day is pour over in the morning at about two thirty, three o'clock. A nice pull of espresso. Nice. It's, it's great. I it's do, a great way to be. I do a pour over every morning, and I do French press on the. Okay. okay. I'm not, I've never. I have not had much success with the French press. What do you mean? I just don't like the way the coffee comes out. Really? Yeah. Is it because you don't have the actual filter? I don't know what you mean. French press comes out um, more oily because there's no paper filter. The paper uh-huh. filter extracts some of the natural oils in coffee. French press that the has paper that filter like screen that doesn't extract the no. oil. So yeah, yeah, that's the primary difference. Uh, I don't know. I just never liked it. Hmm. Um, I have. I could try it again. I've and you know that I've experimented quite a bit. Yeah, I'm just I'm coffees. genuinely surprised. I so you make it for me when I come over for Italian and Mexican food <laughs> that we're gonna, morning. We're, in gonna, between, we're gonna we'll have <laughs> bread in the oven with French press coffee. Okay, for breakfast. All right, and then we're gonna have Mexican food, and then we're gonna have bread in the oven with French press coffee, <laughs> and then we're gonna have gorgonzola for us. Or right. we can stop there for lunch. That would be too much. We, we can't. No, too much. We gotta spread it, it out. Two days. It's bread in the oven and one of those meals, and that's pretty much all we should eat that day. And Probably. Then, well, because usually, I mean, usually bread in the oven goes with, like, some eggs and ham or something sure, like that. Sure. Like, that know? seems reasonable and yeah. also responsible. Yeah. Um, I'm not telling you that I've never had a meal that was only bread in the oven, but typically it goes alongside. Sure. All right. A protein. Cool. Speaking of the Bad Batch, it's been going. <laughs> it's... <laughs> Well, I said earlier, you know, you know uh, the machine doesn't work or you have a bad yeah, batch. Yep. I was like, okay, that's going to be our you. transition. <clears throat> um, it started last Friday. They okay. dropped two episodes. All right. And then... What, is this the second season? This is the second season. Um, and then they dropped the third episode today. So I watched the first two episodes this weekend and then half-ish of the third episode earlier this evening. I ran out of time before we get jumped on the recording, but... Uh, yeah, that's back up and running right now. That is the current Star nice. War that is being engaged. It's ten dollars. Go see a Star War. <laughs> oh, I want you to know that occasionally you can get Elio to just repeat something. Um, mm-hmm. my sister said Anyang, and he immediately said Anyang back, and I was like, "This is my son." <laughs> <laughs> so he, so he's in the he's in the parent phase. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's pretty great. It's almost what you say. Almost. It's it's not quite all the syllables. Eh. Yeah. But, but uh, anyway. Yeah. Bad Batch, interesting, solid. The return. Cool. Um, I don't think this is too much of a spoiler, but um, especially because I don't know where the story is going to go yet. But um, the long-awaited return of Commander Cody. So we'll finally see whatever happened to him. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Sweet. I Have you heard of High on Life? Sounds familiar. Video game. I think it's uh maybe maybe Rick and Morty creators. Don't don't get oh, mad at me if I'm wrong. Okay. Anyway, uh, I've heard nothing but good things about it. I fired it up last night. I played it for like thirty minutes. It's like the shtick wore off on me in about ten minutes. And <laughs> then I was like, and the gameplay isn't fun enough to me to keep me going. It's like a shooter, but it's too floaty. I don't really yeah. like that. And I just so I'm just bailing on it. I was excited to just pop it on because it was on Game Pass and it was new and it was getting a lot of uh, traction. And then I was disappointed. So I, I I should have spent that time playing 30 minutes of Guardians of the Galaxy and getting back into that, but I didn't. And yeah. that's on me. That's on it's me. All right, you learned your lesson. I did. You'll be better next time. I, did. I don't remember if we when we recorded last week if I had finished Jedi Fallen Order at that point. But, um, I don't remember if we had finished and we mentioned it on the show or if you texted me about it, but I, I was aware that you yeah, finished. I did finish that. That was excellent as usual. And now I can free up 80 gigs because <laughs> I can just <laughs> make room for the next thing. 
get make, make room for his Jedi survivor when it comes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Amazing. Anything else for consumption? Yeah, um, we'll keep it on the uh, Star Wars track. I don't think I mentioned it last week, so <clears throat> if I do, just stop me. But um, did I tell you I watched uh, Tales of the Jedi a few weeks ago? No, I don't think I you think did. I forgot to add that to my rundown last week. But um, yeah, that was interesting. I definitely liked aspects of it. I liked some of the individual stories they told. I, I wish they'd give me a little bit more. It kind of felt a little oddly disjointed. And it's meant to, because it's meant to be kind of it's literally just like accounting it's like we're gonna fill in some gaps along the way so basically the way like the first episode was honestly kind of pointless not that it was a bad episode but i just thought it was an interesting choice Uh, i know they wanted to deepen the backstory on ahsoka so like the first Mm -hmm. episode was like her birth and the death of her parent or parents i forget before she gets handed off to the jedi and it's like it's not even about Ahsoka, so it was an odd choice to me, sure. really. Like, it's more really about her parents. Um, there was an episode with a young Qui-Gon being trained by a young Count Dooku. Hmm. Um, they're, well, younger Count Dooku than what we saw, obviously. But, um, you know, it's a Padawan Qui-Gon um, yeah. with, uh, I guess he wasn't a master. He was just a Jedi Knight, Count Dooku. That's cool. Um, just seeing the comparing and contrasting of their styles, especially when you consider the context of the conversation between Dooku and Obi-Wan in Attack of the Clones, it was interesting to see. There was a couple episodes, because another one featured Qui-Gon. It must have been kind of... It was basically like in the in be- some of the in-between scenes of The Phantom Menace, because mm. it's after Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan return from Tatooine, but before they go to Naboo and he ultimately dies Okay, it's right after he gives his briefing on um, running into Darth Maul. That's cool. And it's, you get a couple of big conversations out of that is between Dooku and Yoda and, or no, sorry, maybe it was Mace Windu. I forget. I forget which one it was one or both of them and Qui-Gon and Master Yaddle, mm. which is the other, Yoda type of master that we saw but didn't hear. That 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 quick aside in Jedi Fallen Order is fantastic. Oh yeah, That's and right. Greece that. Greece loves Yaddle. Yeah, <laughs> great. Um, there was an episode where Dooku and Mace Windu go on mission together prior to Mace being on the Council. Oh, interesting. Um, and to see a little bit of that was interesting. Um, we. Get in a, I don't remember if it was the same episode or a separate episode as the one I just mentioned, but we see what the ultimate fate of Master Yaddle was. I won't spoil that for anyone who wants to oh, watch. Cool. Right. Um, we get to see uh, tr- some of Ahsoka's training. Uh, it was like before she, I guess it must be before she really goes out on missions with mm. um, Anakin and Obi Wan, because it's her doing like with like different, um, like the, the little droid things that. Luke learns mm-hmm. the little blaster floating droids, but like more than one at a time. And then it was a training session that Anakin puts her through with Rex and the clones to get cool. her prepared for actual, basically like Anakin's like, the best I can give you is I can make sure that you're not going to die on the battlefield. I'm taking you into war, you know? Right. We get to see how Dooku becomes Sidious's, um, Apprentice, that was cool. really, that was probably the highlight to me as far yeah, as like, the actual story that was told. Yeah, really cool sequence. Like nice. what the story they came up for, how they got involved. It's not what I expected, which was frankly pretty cool. Um, how, how many episodes is this? I think it was like six or eight, <clears throat> and like they're not even all like full half hours. Like one or two of them are like sixteen minutes long. Oh, okay. If you could honestly, you can watch it in a night. Um, nice. but if you wanted to watch it. You could watch it in a week across your lunch breaks. Like, sure. oh, that's, <laughs> that, that's it's, nice. that, it's that type of show. Right. Um, and the f- it's been a long time since I was doing that with Rebels. I know. Um, long time. That's what made me think about it. And then the, <laughs> the final one was it helped explain how. I don't, did, you, did you watch the final season of The Clone Wars? I don't remember. The one that they- I haven't watched really any of it. I, okay. I tried to start The Clone Wars multiple times. I just never really got into it. Well, no, because they did that 
one was it last year or the year before when like they brought it back for the yeah. final final season? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't watch that. I felt okay. like I couldn't watch that if I didn't watch some of it. That's probably for the best overall. Uh, I just mm. couldn't remember if because I know we talked about it because I watched it. Um, and so anyway, they stitched together the final bit of how Rex and Ahsoka got out of everything when Order okay. sixty six is going down. Cool. Um, and then ultimately we got kind of an indication as to how Ahsoka made the choices that put her on the path towards where she would ultimately end up in Rebels. So mm. that was the final episode. Nice. So it was a solid watch. It was, yeah, it was that's, light. That's it was pretty easy. Cool. I like this idea of filling in gaps. Yeah. I, I really liked the idea behind it, and I certainly liked some of the choices they made in it. Not all of them were perfect or just for how short a minute of period of time they were doing. I thought some of it was less essential than others. But overall, definitely a solid, cool addition to the – the canon and it's easy to do it in that animated style and also I, yeah. I appreciate it for what it was. I, I it kind of it's like vaguely rem- reminiscent to me of um these I used to read these like I think what they called Jedi Apprentice or maybe they were even called Padawan I don't remember there was like this this young like this kid series of books that were Obi Wan and Qui Gon I'm sure they're not like canon anymore but they were like you know like a not too thick, like pretty big text, like stories. And it was like a, a mission that they would go on. Yeah. And it was like, you know, it was, there was, you know, a decent amount in each one of them, but there were so many of them. And I, I used to get them from troll. Did you have troll in school? It was like a, I don't remember a magazine thing that you could like order books. Oh, from. I don't know if we had that exact one, but we had similar things. Yeah. I, I don't remember if it was that brand or something else, but yeah. Yeah. I had a, I went through a stack of those and I, I I enjoyed them. Like that was fun to me. It was almost because it's like it's borderline fan fiction. Like it's like just mm-hmm. these little stories of like these characters going on adventures, which is kind of fun. But like that, that this feels like that, but also it, it has basically impact. Is, it, basically, it basically is that, but canon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Nice, nice. Any other consumption? I'm, I that's pretty much all I've consumed. I mean, I'm still watching the Flash. I'm catching up there, but. My my last one was again. I don't remember if I mentioned this last week or not. Uh, maybe I hadn't because I don't think I had really fully delved into it yet. But um, I started The Witcher Two video game. Did oh, cool! Last week. No, I, I feel like you mentioned a while ago that you were considering it. Yeah, so I figured I have some time. Maybe I'll finish it. Maybe I won't before Survivor comes out. But um, I figured once I finished Fallen Order, I was like, okay, like this feels like the appropriate time slot to try and fit that game into it. Um, so I. Played a few hours across, like, I want to say three sessions. Um, I think I just finished the prologue of the game. Um, it's definitely a product of a different time. I figured mm. I would be not much of an adjustment coming after playing Fallen Order because there's kind of a similar, like, block parry set of web, like, like combat as well. Yeah, and with, a, you know, with a, you know, r- r- the, the dodge of aid stuff as well as. Having kind of a uh, simplified set of powers, which again, similar to Jedi Fallen Order, I was like, oh, like that'll probably be pretty close. It's quite different, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Um, I definitely thought that the JFO controller layout was a little bit more natural than this one is. Sure. But that's fine. Uh, it is a very odd <laughs> how they, and I, I'm playing like, they re released different versions plus DLC. So I got the one that was like the, the all encompassing. What are you playing it on? It's, I'm playing it on Xbox One. Oh. Or Xbox X, whatever, sorry. Um, but it's it was a 360 game. Um, oh, wow. It, it was, it's a Witcher 2 Assassin of Kings. I mm-hmm. read a synopsis of the first game because I think it was PC only. I'm, I'm just not. Yeah, they were actually remaking the first one. Uh, assuming they, they're still doing that. Yeah. I know there were some issues with that one. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's definitely cool. Uh it was interesting. I know I said to you I didn't want to say how that series of books ended, but I was confused how this games worked cuz all of his time was pretty much accounted for within the timeline where there wasn't a big enough time jump in any of them that I thought they'd be able to fit these games in. Mm. And again, I don't want to spoil anything, but they talk about the ending of the books in this. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So <laughs> doing a thing here <laughs> curious to see how that unfolds but i can't say too much without spoiling mm. um anything it's just it is it's a curious choice i'm, I'm not objecting to it i'm just i it's odd yeah um but yeah i mean I, i'll 
I'll probably stick with it. I there certainly is stuff to like in it. Um, some of the conventions of video games this doesn't really like hold to. Sure. In how it um transitions from certain things to certain things, and even the way like the prologue is delivered is like not linear, which was a little confusing mm. at first. It actually ended up, I think, ended up being kind of a cool way to do it, but not a very efficient way. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> because it keeps interspersing with like you're retelling the story to someone. Okay, so depending on how you go through the conversation, and some of the conversations are very like linear, so I don't know why they deliver it to you in cutscene dialogue tree form. Because like, just well, if I don't have like options, why not just give it to me in a cutscene? <laughs> sure, sure. Like, um, why am I sitting here going through it? Yeah, like feeling like I need to participate. <laughs> yes, um, but like some of them are and. Great. Um, but anyway, yeah, you, you have some of those conversations here. So based on the way that you choose to unfold the conversation, it, it, there's like kind of episodes of the prologue that are all detailing the same day, but not in linear order. So it's like the day of the assault, noon. It's like, mm. wait, but I already did one that was like the day of the assault, like sundown or something like that. <laughs> yeah. so, I, it all ends up making sense when it's done, but it was like, at first it was kind of jarring to see it that way. But what was kind of cool was when you put the game on and you like launch it, there's this big, long, epic cutscene that is actually a prologue to the game, which was kind of cool. Oh, that's cool. Um, and then you're just like on a pier and you like walk up and you find someone dying and then you take his, his payment for helping him and him not dying, you get like entrance into a tournament and that's the tutorial, but it's not really okay. a tournament. And sure. then like the game actually starts, which was kind of jarring <laughs> for a minute there. I was like, if this doesn't start to make a little more sense, I don't know how I'm going to stick with this, but I, I think yeah. I'll probably be fine. Like I, the last time I played it a few days ago was like literally the beginning of chapter one. So, okay. That's, that's interesting. I, I have not considered going back that far, and I probably won't, because from what you're telling me, it sounds like all stuff that I'm not really going to be willing to sit through. Like, I, I'm, I've been, I'm pretty cutthroat these days when it comes to, like, is this game holding my attention the way that it needs to out of the gate? No. I'm going to move on to another one, because I've got plenty that I want to play. It, it, held my con- it held my attention, but if for no other reason early on than morbid curiosity as to, like, how, how were these the choices that you guys made as to how... Like, it's just very clunky. It's not bad. It's just clunky and disjointed. Once the prologue starts in earnest, at least you get a sense of, okay, we're in the story. We're doing things. We're progressing this. This is an actual game now. (laughs) At first, it was just a little flabbergasted. I probably still... I'm probably going to skip it and go for... I've been toying with firing up The Witcher 3 and playing the... um, the next gen patch that they put out for it. I mean, ultimately I'm going to, if I finish this, I'm going to play that too down the line. Yeah. I loved the story. I loved my time with the books. So mm-hmm. I really wanted to experience did, the games as well. You didn't watch that, uh, that Netflix spinoff. Did you? No, I'll get around to it. One of these years. Oh. Yeah. I might, I might get, I might get back to the books. One of these years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that I would definitely advocate. I'm not going to advocate on behalf of you playing the game. I would sure. advocate on behalf of that. All right. All right. Cool. Cool. Nice. Any other consumption? No, that's it. Wow. Wow. Look at that. With that, I think it's time for our flick of the week. Bullet Train, released in 2022, rated R with a two hour and seven minute runtime. Your IMDb synopsis. Five assassins aboard a swiftly moving bullet train find out that their missions have something in common. Yeah. That's pretty. That's pretty perfect. Um, really, not much you could say, and not much else you could say about this uh, as far as synopsis goes. But what's your uh, what's your hot take? A fun time in the style of a Guy Ritchie film with the action sensibilities of a John Wick film, by way of a mid aughts cri- Asian crime drama. <laughs> Seven out of ten. Nice. Uh, Bullet Train is a nonstop frenetic hodgepodge of and homage to most of my favorite movie tropes. Eight out of ten. <laughs> I feel like we're on the same pitch. Yeah. <laughs> I I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. I was actually so uh, pleasantly surprised because uh, I talk with folks at work about movies all the time. Uh, a couple of my close colleagues have similar tastes in movies, and one of them recommended watching it, said it was a good time. 
but didn't go into it too much. And I was like, okay, if, if he's saying it's a good time, I'm probably going to enjoy it. And I sat down and like within 20 minutes, I was like, this movie was undersold to me. This is <laughs> like, this is fantastic. I well, really, I feel like had I fun. definitely told you I had fun with it. Yeah. I, saw it. I mean, I, but even, even, you gave even it eight, you, I gave it a seven. So but yeah, like, I, I liked it. I, I don't think it's like a phenomenal, phenomenal movie, but it's a, it's a it, very solid, entertaining movie. It's definitely one that I could see. Uh, while the shock value the first time through has a lot of fun to it and a lot, like, definitely adds a lot, uh, it's definitely one I could rewatch because... Yeah, the rewatchability was good because this was the second time I watched it. Sure. Um, I, maybe I would have given it a slightly higher grade if it was the first time I was watching it, but um, I, I will say I remember the, the, the gist of everything that happened, but some of the yeah. nitty-gritty of why things were going in one direction then the other than the other or how a specific interaction between two yeah. different characters. I forgot some of those details, but like mm. whatever, like I remembered the broad strokes of it and I, I genuinely enjoyed it and was, you know, pulled along by the idea of it in the first time. And it was not offensive to rewatch. So yeah, uh, it's, I obviously I'm a huge fan of Kevin Smith and I love, I just love silly banter. So Lemon and Tangerine are just two absolutely wonderful characters <laughs> with like, there's so much silliness around them being twins and people not knowing what they look like. It's just, and, <laughs> and like them constantly being on each other's nerves, but they love each other so much. Like it's just, it's excellent. They definitely had some love, hate, love, uh, odd couple type of stuff going on. Yeah. And they and they're both they I mean both actors I feel like did did a tremendous job like they they each brought something unique to the like to the other side of the twin relationship like it's just they were just so funny. Uh, well, so what's one of the funny things about their performance in this movie was one it made me second guess whether I was correct in saying oh look that's Brian Tyree Henry because yeah. he had a British accent in this and to the best of my knowledge he's American. Um, <laughs> one of the rare instances of doing a not terrible British accent by an American actor. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure a British person would probably laugh at me, but like most of the times when there's an American actor doing a British accent, you're like, oh God, please stop. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying it was the best accent anyone's ever done, but it was at least convincing to me. Sure. Um, and alternately his cohort. Um, this is like the 15th straight time in a row where it's probably not 15, but it's multiple times now it's happened to me where Aaron Tyler Johnson has been on screen and I didn't recognize him. He, dude, he's a chameleon to me. I don't know why. Every time, it's every single time. So it's not just me. It's you no. too. He's a total chameleon to me. I don't. Understand. I'll be like, I'll be. I, I absolutely am in the same boat. At, I, I, I would agree at least fifteen times where I go. Even though who it's been is like, who four, is that? Realistically, yeah. who is that? And then you open IMDb and you go, oh, of course. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> wait, I was like, wait, him. <laughs> um, uh, it happened to me when I saw Tenet. It happened to me when. There's there's something else as well, but like I remember like when it was Ted, I was like, wait, that that's Aaron, that was Aaron Tellum Johnson. Mm -hmm. Like, no, it was the same thing with this. Like, actually, I was good when I saw it in the theater. I didn't look it up. I waited until I was done with the movie to look it up on my phone. Nice. I was like, wait, that was him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. I uh, this is why he's able to play multiple characters in the Marvel universe. Yeah, <laughs> it's because, yeah, it's because yeah. he could just do it, and you wouldn't even you'd be like, that guy looks familiar. <laughs> and like it all comes down to kick ass for me i'm like you're kick ass like how is this happening <laughs> i always forget that that's him but i also never saw the whole movie so oh uh, that's a fun one i enjoy kick ass but he is he i mean he's great in here too like i they brad pitt is wonderful in this movie he's very he's a really fun character i love the idea kind of off type uh, for him too like he doesn't usually play like a ditz yeah he's it's so funny, like, just, like, his whole, the whole thing around his luck, whether it's bad or good luck, and then, like, his, like, kind of identity crisis slash midlife crisis of, like, trying to turn a new leaf as an assassin. Like He's, bas he's basically a himbo Mr. Smith from Mr. Yeah. Mr. Smith. <laughs> but, like, that, like, he was great and very enjoyable as, like, the, while, you know, it's an ensemble movie, he's the proper, I feel like, lead of the story. Like, it mostly surrounds him, but... I every scene with Aaron Taylor Johnson and Brian Tyree Henry when they're together and when they're apart, I they I they killed it for me. Like that, they were fantastic. Yes, <laughs> so so funny. I, I gotta be honest, it's it's truly one of those you spun two wheels in which two names came up, and it's Brian Tyree Henry and Aaron Taylor Johnson. Mm -hmm. <sighs> also, there's six names between the two of them. <laughs> um, <laughs> but 
I never in a million years, if you just told me those two, I was like, I would just say, what a fucking random pairing yeah. of people. How did you come up with that? I'm glad they did because they were great together. If you bring up Thomas the Tank Engine one more time, I'm going to shoot you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> You're bringing it up again. <laughs> I, that like the writing of that whole con- of that whole thing though is also hysterical to me. Like they're they're twins from a young. They're like they're brothers from a young age. They are. Uh, we constantly hear that Lemon learned everything he knows about people from Thomas the Tank Engine only to like in the third act get a flashback to them as children with him watching Thomas the Tank Engine and taking it all in yep. <laughs> and constantly referring to people as various characters from it and that's how he like breaks down character traits and reads people all the way through to his stupid sticker book Chekhov's sticker book yeah. and putting the diesel sticker on the diesel. Just do this movie fantastic. Set the record for most Chekhov's guns. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> because there's this, well, so count many. We got the snake. We've got the, we've got the uh, the giant uh, mascot character. <laughs> we've, we've got we've got the Thomas the Tank. <laughs> what? So we got the sticker book. <laughs> we got water bottle, which got its own like name card, which was fan. Like oh, I what? About that. What a great so like. One of the cool things about, like, I love the style of the movie, yeah. and this t- definitely pulls on, um, obviously, some things from other films. Like, you introduce a character, you put, like, their name title card, like, flashy, artsy styling, like, kind of parallax, like, the background's moving, character's still thing going it's, on. It's and then basically, the- like, the Mortal Kombat thing, where, like, yeah. they put the character with, like, the flesh, the card, and, like, yep. you get, like, kind of, like, a signature, like, entrance. This, but to do that for every character, like, for you to, like, okay, I understand the design language of this movie. I understand that as we introduce a new character, we're gonna do this. And then to do it for the inanimate object of the water bottle, which is, of course, like, you know, to their credit, a character. Uh, <laughs> with, with, with the boom slang, when they did the boom slang character card. <laughs> Oh my goodness. It's just so, it was so funny. And then like to, to watch them speed it up and like you see the trajectory of the water bottle through the movie. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. That was <laughs> just, <water bottle. laughs> that was just so, so good. It was, uh, obviously we're, I mean, spoil. it was heartbreaking when he was shot in the chest, but another one was the bulletproof vest was another, yeah. uh, Check out some of the but uh, actually, yeah, uh, that's, that's another one. <laughs> I I semi lost track of it, but I did. Re- I re- it. I remembered it before the reveal that he wasn't dead, and like it makes perfect sense that he would pass down from drinking the water, and it wasn't because it was, of being shot. It was so heartbreaking though. It was re- though I like how like they're like Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, but then also Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> well, yeah, especially when you consider like. For Tangerine, Lemon dies off screen. Yeah. And for him to process that grief, Mm -hmm. die off screen for Lemon, who then comes back to life and has to process that grief. (laughs) Oh my goodness. That was, that was excellent. I also, I mean, I know we're jumping around all over the place, but for Lemon to sacrifice himself and take the other guy out of the train jump out of the train only to find out in the post credits that he's the one driving the tangerine truck. Yes. It's just, it's the movie is fantastic. The way that it, it pulls all of these things together, like it, the movie's moving so fast and I feel like it needs to move that fast for them to be able to cram all of those things in there. Yeah. Cause it's not a particularly long movie, thankfully. Cause I think no, but like when I, when I read that it was two hours and seven minutes, I was like, Oh wow. That's actually longer than I realized. Because of all the things that they do. Yeah. Also, I mean, considering at that point they cram so much shtick into the movie that by the end there is a little bit of shtick fatigue. And I'm talking about like sure. the end. But that scene where they fall off the train and he's walking out of the water and he's just shaking his head so totally done with it while he's yep. shaking the water out of his gun. Doesn't even look. Just turns nope. around and fires. The, and he's just continuing to walk off like, I'm done with this shit. I don't yeah. like it. It is shtick to uh, like turn up to 11 and i even though i've been kind of done with it at that point of the movie that brought me back in with that <laughs> yeah that was that was really good i uh <laughs> i did just speaking of the end of the movie the the telephone pole falling on sandra bullock's car also very very silly to me oh yeah 
just like all the, the whole ladybug thing is just fantastic. Uh, <laughs> I, another piece of it that I like is the introduction of a character title card and all right. Like this, the wolf, for example, this supposedly like this, like crazy dark, badass, like assassin esque or like, well, criminal character in this case, but uh, to just like, okay, we're going to introduce like quick backstory, like really rapidly through vignettes backstory. There's throw a him 10 on minute the train. tangent that has nothing to do with the movie. Because and, it's backstory and, and, to a killer that died. Yeah. <laughs> it's a character that they introduce in a shocking way. They go away from it entirely. Yep. Come back to get a flashback yep. of someone who died 90 seconds early. <laughs> yes. Amazing. The, the knife bouncing off of the suitcase and stabbing him in the chest. I was like, that could not have. This is so perfect. Well, so when they wrote this. And somebody read that. They went, "Yes, there, no changes. I have no notes." <laughs> this is this is this is what um, what's it called? Um, the Kate Hudson character from Class Onion wanted. Yeah, it's so dumb that it's actually brilliant. Is it? Yeah, this was that. This was not just mm-hmm. dumb. The, the, just because, especially, so it's dumb. so it's so <laughs> jarring how it happens. Mm-hmm. The whole fight's going on. It's this frenetic fight. There's clever stuff by both guys, like Brad Pitt. Even though he's kind of a sad sack, he's clearly a good hitman. And even though he is in a place where he's like trying to have a diplomatic solution, he chooses not to bring the gun on the train because yeah. he's in kind of crisis. He's going to therapy. He's trying to be better. This is his first step towards trying to get back his life while also trying to live this new path. He chooses not to bring the gun on. Is forced into such a situation to defend his own life comes up with all these clever ways to get through the whole fight, and then for it to be something as stupid as he just picks the case up and the knife ricochets. And, yep. Which also, I don't think that knife can retain the amount of kinetic uh, um, energy that was required to do that, but I'm okay with it. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. Perfectly acceptable in the guise of this movie. It was so sudden after how slick the choreography was of that whole yeah. fight. For that, something that, like, coarse to be the way that that fight ends. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it's, it's funny, like, and they, they did something, like, almost identical with the, uh, the Hornets character, of the introduction and death, but like also clearly he was trying to grab her arm so that she didn't give herself the vaccine or the antidote, but uh, not, not so much in trying to get it in himself that quickly. I feel like that was the accident part of it. He was just trying to stop her arm. (laughs) Speak of, speaking of some more Chekhov's, it's the fact that this specific type of poison has been following him around and he doesn't Mm -hmm. seem to have processed that. For then to be the killer that he didn't even know existed. Yep. I was on the train also killing people in this. For her then to then stab him with the antivenom. Yep. To then become its baton pass of another Chekhov's yeah. antivenom when he gets bit so, 15 minutes later. <laughs> would you believe that I already have a dose of the antivenom in my system today? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Which, uh, and uh, again, another, another Chekhov's gun. The fact that he's filling in today because somebody called out sick, which is <laughs> the basis for why the White Death is after this character to begin with. He's thinks it's somebody else. Yeah, and the, yeah, the <laughs> fact that that guy is the same guy. The guy who he's after for is the guy that he called out for. <laughs> yes, perfect. Yes. Ryan Reynolds. Yes. What a cameo. What Silly a cameo. 20 seconds. Well, it, it makes sense because... Um, was David Leach, Leitch, whatever? Is, that's didn't he direct the first Deadpool? Oh, did he? I have no idea. I think that's the connection there. Oh, okay, that's great. That is well because I don't know what the connection is for the Channing Tatum one. I don't know if he's been involved. In- he directed Deadpool two. Oh, okay, I know he did one of them. Yeah, what well, wasn't it? Uh, the brothers that did the first one. Uh, whose names? Um, were they are they brothers? Oh, um, I don't remember that. Something Miller, Lord and Miller. Lord Miller, not brothers. <laughs> but they didn't do the first Deadpool, did they? I think they did. I'm gonna look it up. Go well, into it. While you're doing that, David Leitch, Leitch, whatever the fuck, um, is he co-directed the first John Wick with Chad Sahelski, who I believe took over the rest of that series. He also directed Atomic Blonde and Deadpool 2 and Hobbs and Shaw, which also has okay. a... Well, not quite cameo by Ryan Reynolds, but still. Yeah, oh my god, his character in those is really funny, too. Yeah, Tim Miller directed Deadpool. Okay. Miller sounded right, but uh, there was no Lord no associated Lord. with that. <laughs> no Lord. Um, man, I 
Deadpool came out in 2016. That's crazy. Crazy. Anyway, uh, back to this. Uh, and as much as I can't stand Michael Shannon, <laughs> he didn't. He didn't bother me in this. Well, he's the he's the right type of casting for this role. He he's so over the top in it too, in a great way. But he needed to be because everyone else is over the top. Because sure. the entire movie is over the top. Yeah, but like in a movie where everything is over the top, for him to take his mask off, have ridiculously long hair, and speak in that accent, and be to go, this is over the top. <laughs> 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 the whole very dramatic rolling the revolver on his arm, Russian roulette thing. Also ridiculous. Also, I gotta be honest, I forget some of the details around that whole thing because I Tangent. I watched this movie Friday night when I was not able to come down, hang out with you and Jay. I got done with 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 work pretty late, had dinner, but I ended up having the night to myself on Friday night. Nice. And I was like, it's like 10 o'clock or after 10 o'clock. And I was like, all right, let me start the movie. I said, oh, no, it's two hours. I could probably get it done. I was like, I'm not super tired, but I probably will be. So I grabbed a bag of there's kind of like these like popcorn chips. It's like, I just need something to snack on occasionally to kind of keep me awake. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not like shoving it in my face. I'm just, you know, every couple of minutes, grab a chip and pop it in my mouth and really savor the chewing of the chip. So I got through about half of the movie and was like, I'm not tired at all. And so at this point, I don't really need the chips anymore. I'm just going to be eating more chips that I don't need to eat. And also, you know, watch half an hour of the movie, got up, took a piss, watch half hour of the movie, filled up my glass of water. You know, I was like, oh, you know, put the chips away. I dozed off right after <laughs> the white death entered the train. Okay. And woke up when they were crashing the train. So I missed about eight of the final 15 minutes of the movie. <laughs> sure. No, I mean, I saw it the first time, but I, I forget some of the details. Like they were, basically the last thing I remember was like, they were all kind of like, the, 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 the two um, Japanese guys were on either end of the train and mm -hmm. they had been interrogating Brad Pitt and all of that. And then I dozed off. Brian Tyree Henry was getting, Lemon was getting ready to like drive the train away. So I, for, I forgot exactly how all that happened. So you have to uh, that, but. I love when he's uh, trying to drive the train away and he's like, oh no, I can't, I can't read any of this. I have no idea how to do <laughs> Also, I don't think that loving Thomas the Tank Engine your whole life makes you an expert no. on driving trains. No, but I I appreciate the uh, the immediate the gut reaction that hey this is my world <laughs> I can do this <laughs> and then it'd be of course of course you can't. <laughs> oh man, uh, when Lemon and Ladybug are talking and, <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> wait you like you really don't remember me. <laughs> And the whole that was another thing uh, that they that they brought back was he shot him twice. He's like, he's like you don't remember you shot me. I shoot a lot of people twice. <laughs> what is, he's just looking about like you look like every old white homeless guy I've ever seen. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, what about the uh, you may I don't know if this was during your when you were asleep, but the uh, the whole metaphor thing with the plum not resenting the farmer. That was before the fight. That was okay. when they were like, preparing for all of that. <laughs> so we're the plums. We're the plums. We're the plums. The farmer. <laughs> <laughs> the stupid circular argument. You uh, shot me. You what? killed my brother. Right. <laughs> well, you shot me. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Why are you motherfuckers using metaphors? <laughs> Uh, I really like I like the I really like the grandfather. I don't remember the the character's names of the, the elder. Uh, he was just the elder. I yeah. Forgot. Um. I really liked. Well, he was kind of a prick early on. I mean, I understand the type of man he is. Fine, yep. fair enough. But when he finally figures out what's going on, when his son had called him, mm -hmm. and he ends up on the train, and he's kind of the mysterious elder, and everyone doesn't really know how to react to him. He's trying to assess the situation. He gets a pretty good read on it very quickly. Mm -hmm. But just watching his interactions with all of them, where he's kind of just bemused by all of them, like you would assume he would get, because considering how he treated his son early on, and to be fair, it was a high stakes situation. Yeah. His son is a disappointment to him. He's even more of a disappointment to him in the moment because he let his grandson uh, almost die because he didn't, 
be a good enough father, I guess. Although it's not fair to him, honestly, that situation, right? He didn't know what he got roped into. And it was literally because of the son, the sins of the father that he gets roped into that situation at all. Uh, but you expect him to be short and cruel when he gets on the train. And instead he's just kind of bemused and yeah. letting everything pass by him as he comes to terms with everything as he's whispering sage advice to each of them in turn gives everyone kind of a chance even the girl who threw her his grandson off the the, Mm -hmm. like he's trying to give her an out and she doesn't take it he's Mm -hmm. trying to explain to brad pitt and he's like listen at this point i'm just i'm over it even though i've been trying to be on my own like spiritual (laughs) journey like don't have the time for right now this is just this was supposed to be a snatch and grab and instead i've been bitten by a poisonous snake which I had already been stabbed with the anti-venom from, almost assassinated by a person that I barely even knew existed. I'd also been chased around by these two guys who've already <laughs> shot me in the past. So, <laughs> like, done with it. But also still very willing to see it through at that point, yep. which is uh, like, admirable. It just, I don't know, the, I appreciated everything about the Elder. He's just kind of like, he should be losing his shit, and he should have just honestly killed everyone on the train mm-hmm. the second he got on. It would have simplified things for him. I don't, there's something about the way that he went about everything at that point that I really appreciated. And I found it. I, I completely agree. But there's also, there is also something to like, that is a specific character archetype. Like, and like there's, and which is great. Like, it's like, it's like savoring every moment because every moment matters. Like, so like he, he really is this character that is living in this moment. And like, he has one very specific thing that he does and it's not quite time to do it yet. So he can be here now. And like yeah. th- there's something so cool about that, <laughs> but there's, uh, almost, there's, also... there's almost shades of Obi Wan in the original Star Wars to yeah. it, but a little less curmudgeonly and a little Which... bit more, like I said, just kind of like with a. It's almost an intersection between Obi Wan and Yoda, actually. Which makes sense, kind of though, the, like the classic thing. samurai film type of thing. Sure, you know, but he's uh, got like the the kind of like the like the capable and powerful and dangerous versions and mentorship versions of Obi-Wan with the kind of bemused and eccentric old madness of Yoda. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, no, knowing a little bit more than everybody else in the room at yes. any given time. <laughs> but, but also playing dumb the way Yoda yeah. does when he first, when Luke first shows up. Take you to him. <laughs> uh, what I did love about that too is like, on top of all that, while you actually have this really well constructed character with a great performance, there's also a very like real life scenario in there when he sits on the train. The train is empty and he sits down next to him, and Ladybug goes, Dude. <laughs> train car the entire train is empty it's only corpses and empty seats on the train at this point uh frankly we never saw the train conductor which doesn't make a lot of sense who was driving the train at that point at any point but yeah specifically at the end yeah well wait no it makes it makes one more stop and that's whenever the white death gets on the train with all of his people and they start the train up again. So no, I know, but we never saw who had been driving it five seconds earlier, though. Yeah. He just abandoned the train? <laughs> I mean, I guess he probably got... Yeah, he probably would have left, right? Paid off or whatever. Oh, well, yeah, no. that's true. Or dead. He might be dead. I'm just, I, you know, it, for a movie that was so up on the details, it was odd to not have any sort of reveal or moment that indicated it. I, I didn't think about it the first time I watched it, but the second time I was like... Because, you know, he makes a note about the fact that he, the White Death makes a note on the phone, or, well, his consigliere. It's like, <laughs> um, we bought out the whole train. So, yeah. anyone who's on that train still, we'll deal with you when you get here. And, yeah. you know, the elder is like, oh, yeah, no, I, I met you guys along the way because my son told me where you were going, and I'm here because I also would like to go meet the White Death, you know? Yeah. It was just it was, a, it was just one odd little detail I noticed the second time I watched it, but um yeah i don't know it's Hmm. (laughs) (laughs) i uh so i pulled up the imdb has some of the quotes here Mm -hmm. which i feel like is always a good place to dive into when we have the time because it it sparks some some fun parts of the movie but uh similar in the similar vein to the person sitting down next to them on the train when the entire train is empty being like a very annoying thing that I'm sure you've experienced at some point or another. Um, I know I have. 
But there's other things in here too, like when somebody's like telling you a story that they've already told you before and it's like, stop me if I've told you this and you say, yes, you've told me this, but they tell you the whole story anyway. <laughs> uh, that's then the Hornet and Ladybug are going back and forth and she says, one little prick and you know what happens? And Ladybug says, yes. And then she just goes on this exposition of what happens and he goes, I said, yes. <laughs> It was just so like to have like these little like very human moments in this very ridiculous movie is so funny. I think it's like what adds to it, like because it feels like. Oh wait, we also had a Chekhov's gun that was the actual gun that they put the bomb in. Oh yeah, yep, <laughs> and the bomb in the suitcase as well. Yes, which was a very aggressive explosion. <laughs> yes, the way that uh, the the gun one too, the way that it blew off half of his face was so gory. And such a wonderful way to see very Gus go. Fring. <laughs> okay, <laughs> he didn't fix his tie after that. No, um, um, sorry. Back to the Hornet. Oh, that was it. Just that. Okay. That. <laughs> yeah, I said yes. You told me how it happened. What's going to happen? Oh man. Oh, or when Will was like, "I'm going to ruin your life the way you ruined mine." And also, Ladybug's like dudes and bros the whole time. But dude, I don't even know you. Who you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so much fun now, did, uh, did they ever explain I know they revisit it why was he at the wedding uh, they did explain it he was on a job I just point. don't remember what it was because the hornet was also at the wedding on a job totally unrelated to him and it was to assassinate the wolf's boss right but she kills everyone. She kills everyone. Yeah, he, but he does didn't. They also made a point of like that he's more about snatch and grab. So I think he he might have been there to get something. Yeah, he was there to rob something from someone. But I I couldn't remember if they ever explained who. Yeah, I don't remember. Okay, I have to rewatch it, and that's okay. I will rewatch it. Yeah, no, I was just curious if you caught it because I was I had forgotten the fact that that was the whole thing with the hornet was. I remembered that whoever was in the costume was. Mm-hmm also an assassin and that it was like a weird late stage reveal but i forgot that that was the detail so what was going on i was like i was like wait that's right he wasn't assassinating them it was the other person it's like but i couldn't uh, that's what made me think but it's like wait so why was he there then like obviously he was working i just i couldn't remember what specifically he there was something to do with the case and the money where uh, do you remember when the mascot grabs the case from ladybug yeah and tries to take it she says something about get not having gotten paid for that job or like that was the money for that job that she was like, that's why she's on the train to get it. So like, I wonder if like he would, did he take money that was going to be the money that was paid to her? I don't remember. I really don't remember. Well, I don't, I wonder if she must have backtracked or if they let a intentionally let a clue because that was actually something I forgot the first from the first time I watched it to this time. I was watching it the second time. I had totally forgotten that. Mm. It was arranged for all of them to be on the train by hook or by crook because yeah. the White Death wanted to... It was kind of like the usual suspects where the White Death wanted to clear his accounts of everyone he felt owed a debt at the right. same time. Where, like, Levin and Tangerine were the ones who killed the, the people that worked for him. Um, he thought Brad Pitt's character was the one who... Right killed his wife right? Clive or something like that um or, was it carter i think carter that's what I was, yeah um obviously the one he didn't account for was the son who was accounted for by his daughter mm-hmm. um and then there was the fact that his son is on the train which is the whole thing that involved lemon and tangerine like that's how he got them on there to begin with mm-hmm. um and the hornet obviously tracked that job back to this yeah, but I don't remember if that was intentional or not. That was that would have been a p- the part I was dozing off. So, oh uh, yeah, hmm, yeah, maybe uh, did, did maybe he stiff her on the job, and that's why she's there to and like and but intentionally so, so that she would go after one of maybe that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. maybe or okay. or or was it because <clears throat> did he stiff her because she was just supposed to kill maybe the kingpin? He, she killed everyone. I think that might have been... That sounds like it might have been part of it. Okay, that would make sense then. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> also, also, she was in Deadpool 2, which yes. obviously he was involved with all that. So, okay, I just made that... I just remember that now. It's as he beats. Yeah. Um, the other scene, uh, one that I... Maybe... 
I don't know. It's it's up there. There's a lot of great scenes in this movie, but when they're in the in the snack car, uh, Tangerine <laughs> and Ladybug, and they're fighting. With, with they what's pause. her name? Another random cameo uh, from the boys. I forgot you don't, you don't watch the boys, right? Oh, that, yeah, I do. I'm I'm somewhere in the second season. I I I do know that character. Yeah, that's that's her. Yeah, um, that is funny. I, I I think I had forgotten from the first movie that she was in this one. I saw it. I was like, oh, that's what's her name. <laughs> that's great. Then when he goes, I love, you know, Ladybug is trying to, is trying to get out of, like, change, he's trying to change his stars. He's trying to get out of this violent life. When he, do you have anything sparkling? She's like, yes. And then he's like, I don't know my wallet. Can you pay me? And he's, <laughs> oh, what's his face? Um, tangerine. Tangerine is so, what, like, why does he pay? I like I love that. I love that he does. He it's does like it that, so that she'll leave because he I wants to go back to them <laughs> fighting. Uh, it's great that they both have this unspoken agreement that they're not going to do this with her around. Yep. But that he's going to take advantage and really but, drag the sequence out. And he's like, anything to get this done with. Yeah, I'll pay for the fucking sparkly water yeah. to get Ten, this to end. He's like, he's like 10 quid. <laughs> sure. Well, I mean, he's about to kill him, right? So yeah. it's like, he's going to get it back. <laughs> but meanwhile, meanwhile, the entire room is a wreck already, which is really funny. And which she, she just comes in with no... Yeah, it doesn't notice. The What I do love about that, so he, you know, he drinks it in... But they still they don't go right back at it until they decide that it's like like time in yeah. <laughs> right for the fight. And he goes, "Can we like okay, we've stopped. Can we just talk about this for a minute?" No. All right, and throws the glass bottle the glass. At his <laughs> off his head. <laughs> it's so it's so like Home Alone violent. Yeah, it's so I love it. Yeah, it's there's so, some there's, so there's definitely some Home Alone amongst. It's a weird intersection of the brutality and gore of like the Deadpool John Wick stuff, but mm-hmm. also at times choosing to back it off into almost a cartoonish way, like a Home Alone. Yeah, we're like, yeah, Harry and Marv should die like forty-seven times <laughs> in the second Home Alone. So much so. Oh my gosh, that this movie is just so fun. The um, I I, I was say, oh sorry, go go with go with what you were saying when. Ladybug confronts Lemon the first time, and he sits down. I've got a gun under the table pointed at you. It's the quiet car. You have to lower your voice. Shh. <laughs> no, that whole that was like oh, a who's on first like nuts. situation. <laughs> I, I fully expected her to die as collateral damage just for that slight like yes from the audience that they shouldn't be happy about it, but they yeah. are because she's annoying. <laughs> But uh, he was like, if, if you had a gun under the table, you would have already used it or something along those lines. And he just like pulls that, even that, so violent, right? The way he pulls him forward, his head slaps the table. And then fighting him with, was it a computer? Or like he hits... Like, there was definitely a computer was one of the, the things, computer. yeah. And then like in the throat, but meanwhile, the whole time they're also trying to be quiet. Yes. But- <laughs> so, some of this, some of these sequences, especially when they choose like, okay, like... Neither of these characters can die right now, so they're going to fuck each other. Like, that's the home-blown aspect, right? But some of the cleverness that goes into those fights, whether it be that style of fight or, like, the one where he kills the wolf, it, it, you know, I'm just thinking of it now is it reminds me of some of, like, in, like, the Rush Hour scenes with Jackie Chan, or really any mm. Jackie Chan, where it's, like, his use of environment in yeah. a way that is, like, not just ingenious, but, like, cutesy clever. Yeah. Like, there was kind of even some DNA of that in this. I absolutely agree. That's That's so funny. Um, back to Lemon and Tangerine for a minute, though. Their uh, their whole like sibling bickering, the whole sixteen or seventeen people that were killed on that one job, and then they go on this like five minute tangent of showing you what happened on that job. Yeah. <laughs> oh, forgot about that guy. It was seventeen, but it doesn't really count. <laughs> There's some Gimli Legolas to that. There's yes. some Simon Pegg to that. There's some Guy Ritchie to that. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that was that was so much fun. Oh, oh okay, go ahead. Go, uh, Lemon and Prince talking, and uh, was it? It's it's Lemon and Prince and the the father, and one of them is the bad one, right? Like he was like he wants him to close their eyes, one raise their hand, one point. That whole thing. But the way that Prince is crying and he's like, oh, you're doing it again. He's like, how are you? Like, it's so convincing. <laughs> <laughs> that that got me, too. It's just like, that's like breaking the fourth wall without breaking it, like calling out the actor doing the thing. <laughs> it yeah. was just really great. Uh, what, so. I, what I was going to say was 
not not just the checkoff thing, but some of the through lines that reminded me of it. Like the fact that they keep talking about the Thomas Tank Engine thing. We have the sticker book. He uses the different things, you know, the the, the diesel thing. But yeah. it wasn't just that. I meant to say something earlier, and and I've forgotten. And this reminded me, like it's funny some of like the in world as well as like the meta version of some of like the um, like these through lines and these like cultural touchstones of how do so many of them all know enough about Thomas the Tank Engine for this to be a shared language, including the father who's lived in Japan his whole life. There's an American guy, two British guys, the Japanese guy, all of, well, not even roughly the same age. Like, is Brad Pitt biologically old enough to be Brian Tyree Henry's father? Probably. Like, so, like, we're even talking cross gender. And actually, yeah. I don't even know who's older between him and Aaron Taylor Johnson. Aaron Taylor Johnson is young. Like, yeah. Like Brad Pitt's like my mom's age, <laughs> yeah. So like, um, like that was one thing, and then the same thing with like this this whole thing about this stupid show where they have the car dedicated to this character on this train, yeah. which is so odd to me. I don't know why. Like, it's did you imagine t- like me taking the train to you or or you to me? Like like when you were in Hoboken mm-hmm. and like there was just one car on the train that was dedicated to like I don't know. Pokemon or right, Power yeah. Rangers <laughs> like, or something like, a, like that. Like, like a branded car. Or like um like the Marvel car, right? Where yep. like there's just like someone dressed up as Spider-Man on this one car for some reason. <laughs> like it does does not make any sense to me. But the fact that that whole thing is like in the first scene when they're in the hospital room, you have the TV show, and then there's advertisement for it, there's the car. She's wearing the backpack with that character, wasn't she? Yep. Um like, but somebody makes a comment about like what is that character? But yeah, everybody well, knows Thomas. Say, like, yeah. The, fi- the final thing is like there was a like so, like someone says something, and I think the father says, "Oh, like I know that show or whatever." Yeah, like, it's like it's, it's 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 cool, but it was just like one of those like kind of like baffling things. Like, how is this a through line? Why is Thomas people... ubiquitous? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you and uh, when uh. Uh, Tangerine finds Lemon dead, and he's like, you're, well, you're the best Thomas I know, or something along those lines, or was it the other way around? Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> Lemon tells Tangerine, dead Tangerine that he's Thomas. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's, he, says, he goes, I always thought you were this, but really you were a Thomas all yeah. along, or something like that. Yeah. <sighs> so sweet. Is it Percy or something like that? I thought you were always a Percy something. or Roger or something. Which, show. like, also, I don't know Thomas, the tank engine, so it it's completely no. lost on me, yet so funny. I, I remember I definitely watched it some as a kid, but I I, I was like five. Like I don't yeah. remember that. Sure. Oh my god, so so funny. There's one other thing that caught my eye. I when <laughs> when they're in the train car at the front when they're driving the train and like it's going crazy and the thugs are in there and they're fighting with them. And Lady Buck says to my thugs, hurt people, hurt people. <laughs> So consistent in there the was, whole movie. I there was, uh, yeah, him doing this like fucking dime store therapy shit because yep. like, he's literally just learned in therapy. Yes, constantly um, referencing his therapist the same way, Doctor Richard Nygaard style. Yeah. <laughs> Doctor Richard <laughs> Nygaard. <laughs> oh, there, man. I I appreciated. We didn't talk about this like e storyline, but the whole thing with them with the white desk people calling Tangerine with updates across the whole thing yep. and them realizing there's something wrong, but they can't prove it. Oh yeah, no, we definitely have the, the, the sun and the money, yep. which they do minutes before the conversation. Mm-hmm. But while he's on the phone, the sun dies and they lose the case. Yeah. <laughs> so, Oh, it's, want, it's it, very Abbott and Costello that, that whole thing. Like yes. we're like, he's, everything's fine from literally this second, but in the next second, it's completely not fine. Yes. Could not be less fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, for, for him to, yeah. Well, the first time, oh yeah, no, everything's fine. Well, you hung up on us. We don't believe. Oh yeah. yeah, no, everything's fine. Okay. Well now we want proof. Okay, cool. They do the whole weekend at Bernie's thing where yep. lemons <laughs> working him in the window. Oh my God. And he's, he's like, oh yeah, no, everything's totally, totally no, yeah, next time. Okay. Well, no, we want you off the train. We want to yeah. see the case. <laughs> and you have the brief alliance between um, Ladybug and Lemon. Where I love that enemy of my him. enemy for five minutes. Yeah, and the <laughs> just for Ladybug again the whole luck not luck thing where he op- accidentally opens the case. 
and all this shit falls out like no fight to get back on the train oh all God. that's just stupid he, it's so stupid why did you why did you spin it i was really trying to sell it like and it was it. and it was so good did you see him he was so buying it yes we almost <laughs> had it <laughs> Literally says but, like like you don't have to kill you now, right? Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh I loved it. I really I really enjoyed this movie. Um it's just it was just a blast. Fun. It was just so entertaining. I think fun is the best word for this movie. Yeah, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you have anything else on it? Not really. I think we got most of the the good big stuff. Cool. Um, Definitely one I will be rewatching. Like yeah. this like, if if I had television where movies came on every once in a while like a tnt or something like that oh this would be such a good tnt like yeah where you accidentally come across you're like yeah i'll sit down for the next six hours and watch this through commercials or fx or something fxx fx on hulu like i'll throw this (laughs) this would be like such a clutch i'm gonna throw this on in the background while i'm doing like laundry and shit yes absolutely absolutely well that's all for this week's episode of Flicks in the Six. We hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you have a movie for us to review or nuggets for us to discuss, you can send those requests to Flicks in the Six at thespintune.com. Tune in next week for more movie and beer goodness. Until then, I'm Anthony Costanzo. I'm Al Bielsi. Thanks for coming out. Last, last, last.